everybody doing on this fantastic fucking Sunday chat <clears throat> my god I'm late I know I'm late I had to set up the uh, the whole uh, tiltify charity thing it takes a while to fucking test I just wanted to make sure everything was working before I went live uh, so there were no technical issues but uh, we are here now yeah we're 20 minutes late but it's not that big of a deal because we're going to be rocking the same amount of time on stream that we would be rocking even if I was early. Anyways, chat, today is going to be a very special stream today. It is, number one, a React stream, but also, more especially, if that's the correct terminology, it is a charity stream today, chat. Uh, we are doing a World Suicide Prevention Day charity stream for... The American Daddy Foundation Jerry. for Suicide Prevention, right? Uh, worldwide today, it is Suicide Prevention Day. Uh, I posted on Instagram a whole post about mental health uh, and TikTok as well but before I went live. Uh, and then the final thing that we're... I mean, I'm posting on YouTube today too, but I don't have anything in there for Suicide Prevention Day. But uh, the last thing that we're doing for today, which is right now, uh, is going to be uh, a charity stream. Uh, for the uh, World Suicide Prevention Day. I chose the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention uh, as the charity to donate to today. Uh, there's a few, obviously, uh, but I chose this one just because I thought it was more broad, as broad as I could go for like what it would all encompass and how many people it would encompass uh, because they have a lot of like more tight-knit charities, uh, and I just wanted to do something that was more broad. Uh, a little rundown of uh, the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention, uh, a.k.a. AFSP, uh, is dedicated to saving lives and bringing hope to those affected by suicide. They create a culture that's smart about mental health by engaging the following core strategies. They fund scientific research towards suicide prevention, depression, and other uh, mental health issues. They educate the public about mental health and suicide prevention. They advocate for public policies in mental health and suicide prevention within the government. Uh, and they support survivors of suicide loss and those affected by suicide in their mission. Uh, they also have their own little hotline and everything. So, um, yeah, I see a lot of people saying, fuck suicide. I mean, y'all, if y'all want to say that, that's also fine. I would, I would more so say that's geared towards saying fuck cancer, but also, uh, yeah, fuck suicide, dude. It is never the answer. Uh, just a quick, uh, little spiel that I wanted to give before we get into the reactions. Uh, keep in mind, I'll also read off these donors, a little PSA before I do this rant. Uh, if you planned on giving money today or this week or whatever uh, on one of my streams or subbing or whatever, instead of, well, subs are different because it, it, like you have to continue your fucking sub badge. I understand that. You guys are obsessed with fucking sub badges. But if you planned on like either donoing or giving bits or any of that within any near future on my stream, instead of doing that, uh, please donate to uh, the charity stream that I have set up for today. Uh, exclamation point SP, uh, which is just suicide prevention because I didn't want you guys to have to type out the entire thing. I believe there's also a pinned comment. Um, yeah, pinned comment for the uh, donation link as well. Uh, any amount, uh, I appreciate any amount. Uh, the AFSP also appreciates uh, I will read the dono just as I would read a bit dono. Uh, so if you're like saying, oh, I want to give bitch just so you read my message, I will also read your message if you send money through Tiltify because uh, it shows up in my alert box in the same way. Uh, Gudgeon Aiden for the sub. Uh, Milky for the sub. Not Joey for the three uh, to Tiltify. Oh, we're not to Tiltify. To the American uh, AFSP, American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. Thank you for doing the stream. My brother died from suicide when he was 13. I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, rip of the chat for not Joey's, uh, brother, dude. And I'm sorry that he passed. 
Uh, loser and Grimace for the sub. Zemotic for the three. Uh, love your streams. Can't uh, message me because I'm banned by that. So key. Uh, keep it up. Love the cause. Noob for the sub. Christian for the three. Found out my dog pass. I'm sorry to hear that. Was that Disney not even with uh, not even with her three hours ago? Rushed home and said goodbye. Thank you for being live. Definitely going to cheer me up. Luca for the three. Thought I'd stop by and help donate. Mello for the three. Uh, I saw you played Child Lesborn. I wanted to say uh, I think you should finish it. I played it and nearly cried. Really? It's that sad of a game? Fiddle. Fiddle dinks for the fucking hundred dollar don't. Oh, it says make a wish. Hold up. I got to fix that fucking alert box. That's from the last charity stream. Hold up, chat. Technical difficulties, which I was trying to fucking fix before stream, and y'all were rushing me to go live. God damn it. Oh, hold up. <laughs> if, if that's not the charity that you're you're donating to American Suicide, uh, American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. All right, I fixed it. This should have fixed it. There it is. There it is. Okay. Uh, fiddle for the hundred dollar dono to the American Foundation Suicide Prevention says to anybody who's having suicidal thoughts or self-harm, please reach out to somebody. Reaching out, uh, does that make you a weaker person? Uh, it, uh, I'd say it makes you stronger. Remember, there's always light at the end of the tunnel. You will make it through the dark times. Love you, chat. Long live Cam. W fucking fiddle danks. Uh, and yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll give a quick message, uh, um, about suicide in general, and I'll probably, uh, give it a little spiel about Cam as well. Clicky for the sub. Uh, they took for the five. Uh, you're the best person in the business for the business. What does that even mean? Uh, Crazy Pig, Molly, Dairy, Sum, Ava, Bennett, TR, Croissant, Spider, D Player, Red, Wings, and your fave for the sub. Uh, and Joe, oh, no, that's literally me. <laughs> I was about to read out my test dono. I, I, <laughs> every, every time I do a charity stream, I do a test dono to make sure it's working. I almost read out my test dono. <laughs> uh, Dairy for the 319 bits, TJ for the 10. Uh, for suicide prevention, F, uh, depression, uh, sponge for the three, give you the last three dollars to charity, dub, DRN for the sub, Luca for the one, uh, DR Plazzi for the twenty-four dollars, uh, uh, suicide prevention, love the stream, glad you're supporting a good cause, Evelyn for the three, sorry for not donating the last stream, you're good, about two years ago, my friend Overdose found it, uh, him since we were meant to hang out that day, uh, please always check on friends, facts, Mod and Chucky for the sub, King for the two, uh, to suicide prevention, and Milky for the 18 to suicide prevention, Lost a family friend to suicide. I'm a survivor myself. Well, I'm glad you're still here, man. Uh, and King for the two. Uh, for anybody who have cancer, we're here for you. Never give up uh, for what you have, for for what you live, to have your best life. We wish you luck. Cancer? I mean, I appreciate the message as well, but this is not this is not a cancer charity stream. If you want to talk about cancer as well, that's perfectly fine. But this, this charity stream specifically is geared towards suicide prevention. Third for the sun. All right. My little spiel before we get into the reacts. Actually, I'll show you guys the reacts that we're doing today. We got a bunch on fucking deck. Uh, first off, we got a Darman video, which is going to be a fucking dub. Uh, Ten-year-old buys only buys designer, instantly regrets it. Uh, then we got a Code Blue Camp video, the consequences of messing with a canine. I investigated a city that burns homeless people alive. Another Tyler Oliveira video. The scammer who sold the Eiffel Tower twice. The infamous poop plane. Uh, he stole $40 million and got caught. The Scummiest Family channel on YouTube. Pizza on Toast, the case cooking video, an oldie but a goodie. And six scary unexplained paranormal clips. Does that sound good? Chat! They took for the five. Sir, you have uh, to understand the business of the business. It's Josh for the two. Sorry, I couldn't give more. I lost my cousin a few months ago, and it is hard, and nobody should have to go through that. Fact, suicide is a permanent solution to a temporary problem. Trinity for the five. I personally understand what it's like uh, to go through mental health issues and trying to end my own life. It's personally one of the worst things I've ever experienced. And I want to support everybody in way I can. Thank you. Darth for the one. Uh, Hoppin for the one. Uh, Jory for the one. Uh, and DRN for the three. My sister tried to commit, but thankfully she's still alive. Well, I'm glad she's still here. Uh, your streams have truly made it easier to push through because uh, your videos and stream let me take my mind off the real world. Says Gunch Gunch. Thank you for the five. Uh, and Milky for the sub scratching for the three. So do boys go to the charity? What? Bits, you mean? So do boys go to the charity? No, I just said bits don't go to the charity. Please, cat for the sub. If you're gonna buy bits, don't buy bits. Just fucking donate to the charity. Uh, Seabass for the 10 uh, to suicide prevention and upgrade for the 20. Thank you for the fucking 20, dude. Uh, C. Jordan and Ani for the sub. Big uh, BB for the three. A three dollars charity. Uh, Jack for the three. Uh, I'll use this to the charity. Okay. Uh, I know. Okay. Also, also, I'll, every time I do a charity stream, people donate and say, "I don't know how to do this. Donate this for me." 
it's it's by far the easiest thing in the world. All you do is click the link and just hit donate, and then it has like 85 different forms of payment. I'm pretty sure you can pay in cryptocurrency too. Like I I I so when you say I don't know how to do it, okay, I'll donate your money. Keep in mind when you donate me money, a fraction of that goes to either Twitch or PayPal. And so I'm just donating, you're just losing, I'm losing money and giving that to the charity, which is fine, right? I'm fine with doing that. But I'm saying like, we could have donated more money if you had just directly donated to the link rather than buying either bits or sending me money and then having a fraction of that given to a company, right? Rather than the actual charity. It's just, I feel like when people say that, it's just, hey, Joe, I don't want to figure this out. So please donate this for me. I'll do it. But uh, it's really easy to donate. Uh, Jack for the three, uh, uh, Cliff for the 30, uh, to suicide prevention, Darth for the five. Uh, recently my best friend of six years struggling with mental health, uh, I lost my grandpa to suicide. I'm sorry to hear that. Darth for the three. Uh, Molly for the 12, I be in that guy for the sub, they took for the five. Uh, the person who drove her to suicide currently sitting in prison for seven years. I lost my cousin to suicide. Somebody tried to prompt her to suicide. That is actually crazy. Uh, nor... Norita for the 40 for suicide prevention. Somebody who suffers from depression was able to get help. I still have bad days, but I remind myself that the bad days uh, don't last. Everybody who's going through the same thing, please hold on. Darth for the one. Viv for the three. Trash for the 10. I was suicidal at 12, now I'm 14, but uh, better now. And it was a rough time in my life with bullies and teachers arguing with parents. Well, I'm glad you got help to a degree, dude. Uh, always push through that shit. Uh, and I'm glad you got through it. Luca for the three. My dad found out one of his old friends worked with him. Uh... And the sheriff's office hung himself. Sorry to hear that. David for the 50 to suicide prevention. I was on my way to, uh, but your stream started then, so I decided to watch you in 10. No joke. I was on my way to dead. What do you mean? Kill yourself? Please do not do that, dude. Uh, Eham for the sub. Hydro Bart for the fucking 385. And thank you for the 50, David. Fucking suicide prevention. Let me give my quick uh, spiel, and then we'll get into uh, the video. Or the videos. The reason I am an ad... Okay. I do a lot of charity streams all around. Right. But if you watch me on Twitch, you watch me on YouTube, I generally am most fond of advocating for suicide prevention out of everything I do in terms of like trying to help certain causes. A lot of what I do is with cancer, but a lot of what I say is for suicide prevention. Right. Uh, and this is actually my first suicide prevention charity stream, uh, which I'm very glad to be doing. So W for that. But I just wanted to say in general, um, and I'm kind of going to be repeating what I fucking said in my fucking four minute TikTok that I posted. But uh, basically, if you're ever going through something, somebody said, can we watch something? Oh, my God. Fucking literally L chatter, dude. I'm, tr I'm trying to give a spiel. But following for 41 seconds, fishy 4878, little Joe Bart salute to your fucking dumbass. Get the fuck out of here, man. Holy shit. I'm giving a goddamn spiel. Dude, leave. If you, if you don't want to wait fucking two minutes for me to give a spiel about my fucking suicide charity stream, dude, fuck off, right? By all means, fuck off, right? Leave. Damn. 360 for the fucking... How many subs did you just gift? 360 for the 25 gifted subs. Thank you for the 25 gifted Thank them if you got a sub. Thank you for the 25 gifted. No limit for the 10 to suicide prevention. Alex for the one. Hazim for the sub. Uh, Mamarian for the $100 fucking dono to suicide prevention. Another dub there. As somebody who struggled uh, with being suicidal and survived a attempt, it really means a lot to see a stream dedicated to this topic. You're not weak for talking or reaching out. People care, even strangers. And um, wait, people care, even strangers. And you're never truly alone, especially when you're young. You have never actually lived yet. 860 for the one. Uh, K Breezy for the sub. Uh, Creo for the 10 to suicide prevention. Rustin for the 20. I personally don't uh, know anybody who's committed suicide, but I know a lot of people uh, who have, or I know of somebody who has, and I saw how many people it has ruined. Yeah, uh, it's it, it's never a good fucking situation to be in, uh, especially as a family member or a loved one uh, that knows the person that committed suicide. Uh, Jack for the 797, Rachel for the 50, suicide prevention, T. Brisha for the 20, to suicide prevention. I, my mother's godson, commit suicide. I'm sorry to hear that. I almost ended my life four years ago. I'm glad I didn't. My life has changed. I'm glad to hear that as well. I've struggled with suicide prevention in my intention, so I'm happy to donate, uh, hopefully prevent another from feeling that way. Uh, wait, I said I'm, wait, no. Wait, to T. Brisha, I, my mother of my godson commits suicide. I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, and then I almost ended my life four years ago. I'm glad I didn't. I'm thankful to hear that, Rachel. Thank you for the 50. I think I literally reversed those, or I said the same thing twice. I'm trying to, I'm trying to just get through these because there's a lot of them, uh, which I'm thankful for. 
Uh, Jack for the 797. Uh, I've struggled with suicidal thoughts and intentions. So I'm uh, happy to donate. Maddie for the 30. Appreciate you doing this. Used to be suicidal, so it means a lot. Mr. Finn for the 340. Uh, my uncle lost his life to suicide. Uh, sorry to hear that. Silhouette for the one. Use it for the five. Wanted to donate. I think suicide is a thing that people should not do. I have no experience in it. Sand for the 50 to suicide profession. I'm 13. I lost my dad to suicide last month. Holy fucking shit. Rip in the chat. You've helped me uh, take my mind off of it all. I'm genuinely sorry to hear that. They said love from Oregon. Well, thank you for the 50, Zan. Uh, Z uh, Shana for, or Shanna for the 30, Suicide Profession Court for the one. Uh, Murphy for the one. Uh, Frank for the 30, uh, to Suicide Prevention. Murphy for the one. I already read that. Lola for the one. Uh, Friday Depression, Anxiety, don't have a lot of money, but I still wanted to donate. Well, thank you. Any donation matters. I appreciate any dono. All right. Let me get through this spiel and then we'll get in. If you're ever going through something, reach out to someone, okay? Um, especially if you're a guy. I know I always say, especially if you're a guy, I'm not trying to like, Make it so, oh, if you're a woman going through something depressive, uh, that it, it, that's not like, oh, that doesn't matter. No, it still matters. The reason I always say, especially if you're a guy, is because there's this stipulation around men, especially in social groups, where you kind of really don't open up to each other about your emotions. Uh, and so it's easier for women to kind of reach out to one another comparably to men because men will kind of feel, A, they'll feel like themselves that they're weak, or B, their friend might make fun of them or some shit if they fucking talk about their mental health. If you ever have a friend that fucking makes fun of you, if you bring up some sort of emotional issue that you're having, you're not weak. They're just a fucking loser, okay? They're a dickhead. And stop being friends with them, right? That, that, that's number one. Number two, find somebody that can help you, right? A lot of people can't. Even if the person that you, that you talk to can't individually help you, they could obviously point you in the direction of somebody that can, okay? Suicide is never the answer. The odds of you being on this earth, the odds of you being alive, no matter how confusing life is and, and, and how it makes no sense that we're humans and how you even understand me right now and how, how fucking scary life is to a degree, dude, it's worth living because it's the only thing that you will and may ever have, right? This may be the only life that you ever get to live, even if it's confusing, even if it's shitty a lot of the time, right? It's the only experience you may ever have. So why not live the life and live as long as you possibly can, not take your life sooner rather than later, right? And experience as many good things as you can within that life, right? None of us existed 100 years ago. None of us existed in this chat probably 30 years ago, maybe 40 for some, for some of my viewers, right? And we didn't exist for an infinite amount of time. You're alive now for a very, very short amount of time in the scheme of the universe, right? And then you'll be gone, right? So why would you want to take your life sooner rather than later, right? Later meaning dying of natural causes, not taking your life later on, right? Life's really short. And in all honesty... I'm personally scared of death some days, right? And I know a lot of people that are going through pain and mental struggle deem death as better than life, right? Deem nothing as better than something. But what you're going through will get better. You need to get help, right? You're, you're going to need to battle those issues that, that you have, those mental problems that you have. You're going to need to seek help. You're going to need to go to therapy. You might need to go to a psychiatrist, all this other stuff, right? But getting through that is rewarding because on the other side, it's going to be amazing, right? Not all of the time. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that fucking life is sunshine and fucking rainbows because it's not, right? Flat out, it's not. But there's a lot of good things within life, right? It's ups and downs. It's like going up and down a fucking hill, man. You're going to have good days. You're going to have bad days. You're going to have good and bad times within a day. That's life, right? If you're ever going through something, you're seriously contemplating suicide, either call 988, which is the suicide hotline, or reach out to somebody and get help, okay? Um, I have had, I'm 21 years old, right? I have had so many people in my life commit suicide uh, for my age, right? Uh, even one of my mods, uh, my chat, you could put the K on the emote now. Uh, I kind of wanted to dedicate this stream in part um, to one of my mods. Uh, who died almost a year ago today. Um, 
he was a mod of mine. A lot of you guys probably don't know him uh, because I do have a lot of new viewers. Uh, but he was a great mod. He was my favorite mod. He was one of the only mods that was older than me as well. Uh, he was in the Navy. Uh, he was dealing with a lot of mental health issues. Took a break, got back. He said he was better. Uh, and then one day we found out that he took his own life. Um, and it's sad, right? And, and I know for a lot of people here that may know somebody that took their own life, uh, you can't help but, like, blame yourself. Uh, like, oh, I could have helped them, right? You Don't do that, number one, right? Because you can always look in hindsight and be like, oh, I could have done something more. But you didn't know, right? But what I'm going to say, though, for future reference, right, is if you're not going through something, just check up on your friends, right? And, and I, what I mean by that is don't walk up to your friend and say, hey, are you suicidal? Like, <laughs> that, that's not how you bring that up, right? Because they're not going to want to, and they're not going to want to talk to you, right? What I mean by check up on your friends is like, say, hey, how you doing, man? Like, you, you all right? How was your day, right? Something to like subtly get a conversation going, right? Get somebody to open up to you if they're going through something. And if they're not, that's great then you just checked up on them and there's no there, there's no problem, right? But if they are going through something, then it's good that you'd be there. Bart for the three. I know it doesn't count as a suicide experience uh, and it's not a lot of money, but I remember I lost my grandfather to heart disease and I know how hard it is to lose somebody. Uh, and in 2021, I found your stream and you made me happy when I was really depressed. You are uh, the streamer to escape reality, mostly for the fucking 10 uh, to suicide prevention. I almost lost my life to suicide May 3rd. I've tried to take my life more times than I can count. I'm a survivor and can say it does get better. You have no idea how many people you would find who love you. Exactly. Ghost for the one. Uh, Super for the four. Uh, Darth for the 10. You're speaking. Uh, when I say for the 10, I I'm not going to keep saying for suicide prevention because that's obviously what it's for. So I'm just going to say for the 10 so I don't have to keep repeatedly saying the same thing. Uh, you're, you're speaking 100% facts. Uh, and I'm somebody who has dealt with a lot of mental health issues. Love the stream. Keep it up. Hannah for the 10. Uh, as somebody uh, who has been suicidal and seen close friends struggle with the same things, it's really great seeing you discuss this and raise money for it. Kale for the three. I didn't end my life because of Jenna Ortega. Uh, cringe. And no, I'm not making fun of suicidal people. You really... Uh, okay, if that's not a joke, that's fine. But if you're trying to make a joke, that not the time. Uh, Jay for the 20. I hope this 20 helps. I've been in, uh, suicidal in the past, tried to commit many times. I've gotten help. I have friends that have support me. Uh, Finn for the 20. I've uh, gone through so many mental health hospitals, and they've helped me. Very glad I reached out. Wick for the three. Thank you so much for the charity streams. Not only have I gone through depressive episodes, but I have a best friend who experienced the same things. E. Marie for the three. Uh, I struggle with suicidal thoughts myself. Wishing everybody a good week. Twitch for the sub HNP. Sorry, I don't have much money, but I lived with depression for years, and it eats you alive, and I've struggled a lot and thought. Uh, it's so self-isolating, so what you do is amazing for people struggling. Gambling for the three. Been crying for the last 24 hours. I'm in shit, man. I'm a girl with a long-distance girlfriend, and it's super healthy, but I'm so stressed out. I don't know if I want to live at this point. I have a therapist, but I don't want to be sent to a hospital. I've been starving myself lately, and I lost six pounds in a week. Advice, I really up, look up to you. Uh, you need to want to get help. If you're going to sit here and then, like, like wallow uh, and let stuff consume you, that's another issue, right? You sitting here and getting therapy will only help if you want help, right? It's the same thing as an addiction, right, in, in a sense. Like, if, if you're going to a rehab center for a meth addiction and you get clean, but you never wanted to go to begin with, you might relapse, right? In a similar fashion, if you're going to therapy and you don't want help and you're not trying to help yourself, it's not going to do anything, right? Uh, you want to get help, right? That's what you need to do. That, that's the first step is I want to help myself. Okay, what are the steps from here? Uh, Cole for the 15. Uh, and I, I mean, all I could say to you is really like life is worth living. Uh, you just gotta, you, you gotta push through it. You gotta get help. Cole for the 15. Thank you for bringing attention to the organization. Uh, love me and keep up the great work. R slug for the five. Uh, my mom lost her brother to suicide uh, after my cousin cheated on him in the army. Anonymous for the 50. Uh, I've struggled a lot with suicidal thoughts for a few years now. It's a huge struggle for me. I appreciate the streams and all you do for suicide prevention. I can tell it still weighs on her whenever uh, it's in SPM, but I try my best to cancel it out. I, I don't, I don't, I'm now rereading re the rest of the message that I skipped past. I, I just noticed I didn't finish that. Try my best to cancel it out with helping her and things. M asked for the sub. 
Uh, Evelyn for the 300 minis. Honey for the 20. SO extra for the 10. All right, dude, I actually got to span through these. Uh, Scratchy for the 20 because we... <laughs> I'm going to be reading Donos for like an hour. Mikey for the three. Uh, lost two, uh, two of my friends to suicide in February. I'm sorry to hear that. Anonymous for the two. TD, uh, TK for the five. What do you put on Chipotle to burrito? Not talking about that right now. Narita for the 60. Thank you for the 60 to suicide prevention. A dumbass for the three. Ugg for the three. Lolo for the one. Murphy for the one. Frag for the five. Shada for the 30. Uh, Darth for the 10. Ghost for the one. Mel mostly for the 10. Uh, Anna for the 20. Uh, Ism for the three, Tony for the sub, Lil Bruce for the sub, Love for the one, Bar for the three, Spag for the three, Osh for the f for the ten, Cade for the five, Mamarian for the twenty, Nazar for the for the one, Owen for the sixteen. I'm sorry I'm not reading your your guys' messages now, but th the messages are like a paragraph long, and there's like twenty of them. So I like I'll re I'll try and read as many as I can, but we're never gonna get to the videos. <laughs> I Owen for the ten. Uh, casual for the five. As a part of care for others, please remember, uh, especially for everybody's happiness, something I can say if you're having a bad day. Uh, remember that you experience happiness or love. Owen for the 10. Uh, big advocate for suicide prevention. Uh, Mamarian for the 25. Life is hard. Uh, what makes it so valuable is the ups and downs. Uh, without the bad, there wouldn't be good. Cain for the five. Uh, you not only help me, but hundreds of others. Uh, Osher for the $100 donor of suicide prevention. Having a lot of suicide thoughts and fighting it every day. Happy to donate. I hope it helps. Thank you for uh, doing a stream for something this important. Thank you for the $100 donut, dude. And keep fighting that shit. Get the help that you need. Cock for the fucking 50 uh, gifted fucking subs. Oh, my God. The donuts are insane. Cock for the 50 gifted subs. That sounds weird. It's KOC, not COKC. Thank you for the fucking 50 gifted uh, KOC 345. Three, fucking shit. Bar for the thir uh, 300 bitties. Uh, asking about G Fuel. Love for the one. Uh, my mom recently passed. I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, low Brucey for the one. Uh, struggling with depression for four years. Tone for the 50 to suicide prevention. Anybody has suicidal thoughts, reach out. Asum for the one, or for the three, uh, and Anna for the 20. Uh, those struggling especially need to know it's not embarrassing to cry and ask for help. Exactly. Con, thank you for the 50. Uh, AP for the one. Milky for the three. Uh, suicidal thoughts. I want to say, uh, subs kid at my school just committed suicide. I won't get into details how he was a close friend of mine. I'm sorry to hear that. Till for the, th uh, for the 10. All right. What are we even at? Because there's a few milestones that I didn't even mention that we have to, we're already at $1,271 and I haven't fucking started the reactions. Holy fucking dub. Oh, I have to do a little dance. All right. We'll do our little dance. Then we'll get into the reactions. Also, there's an extra video upload uh, goal or an extra YouTube video upload goal after this for the week. Damn, where's the dance that I wanted to do? This one. I like to I gotta switch up the song. I feel like I gotta switch up the song. Maybe this one? No. <laughs> That is good. This was the best. Bento matoma, bento matoma. Bye, bye. Bento matoma, bento matoma. Bento matoma. Bye, bye. Bento matoma, bento matoma. dance because we actually got to get into the fucking reactions chat all right yo thank you guys for the fucking donos dude i appreciate that shit so does american foundation for suicide prevention already at a thousand two hundred seventy two dollars haven't even started the fucking reactions buffalo for the sub i appreciate everybody that's donoing no matter how big or small w donos for the one cock for the fucking cock for another fucking five or ten gifted thank you for the subs charlotte for the sub i'm out of breath already that's that's a yikes tell him for the 10 i'm sorry if i missed anybody's donos as well uh, or don't know messages, uh, but I kind of had to start spamming through them because, like, I, if, and, like there are, there's so many, and which I'm happy about, but there's so many. Uh, Nassar for the one, Owen for the 16. I think I read these. Casual and TB for the three. Sniper for the three. Tried to donate, but it wouldn't work. I'm going to say suicide is never the answer. Uh, it was, I was a couple years ago, but it gets better. Thank you. Uh, XX for the sub, Mellow for the two. 
Uh, never commit suicide. If you need help, call 988. Exactly. Buffalo for the sub. All right. Chat, are y'all ready to get into the fucking reactions? First video of the fucking day. I'm cracking a fucking liquid death. Not sponsored. I am sponsored by Feel Free. Exclamation point, Feel Free. Code Joe B, $40 off. But uh, not sponsored by Liquid Death. But I do love it. And it's just water. So, shady for the sub. All right. 30-minute intro. Well, yeah, it was a longer intro because it's a charity stream. And the majority of the donos come in, like, off off rip, right? The majority of the donos and charity streams that I do on Twitch come in within the first 30 minutes. Yo, cock for the 25 gifted again, dude. What the fuck? KOC, thank you for the fucking 35. Or no, KOC, 345 for the 25 gifteds. Appreciate the fucking subs. Dub in the chat for that. Thank them if you got a sub. Thank you for the 25 gifteds. I appreciate the fucking subs. Thank them if you got a fucking free sub. Now you got the sub badges, sub emotes, and everything. Created for the three. You do all these huge charities and raise massive funds for these organizations. Put so much effort in what you do. You yourself are such uh, an entertaining and helpful help person. And you save multiple lives by just being you. Thank you. Uh, shady for the sub. <coughs> Alec for the seven. Are you going to ever post a suicide prevention donation thing on Instagram? What do you mean? I, I linked my... I posted... I did an Instagram post for suicide prevention. Um, but then I posted on my story my link for my stream. And so then people could come to the stream and donate. Uh, oh, sure, for the $100 donut of fucking suicide prevention. Thank you, Osher Sky, for the $100 donut. Marley for the sub. Alex for the seven. I want to say I have two kids at our school that committed suicide around the same week in a touchy uh, topic, but I appreciate you talking about it because most streamers won't. Uh, oh, sure, thank you for the fucking $100 donut, dude. I actually appreciate that. And Cock, thank you for the fucking 10. Or how many how many gifts was that? Yo, Cock, thank you for the 25 gifts again there, man. Joey Artelosi for the sub manifest for the fucking sub. Think of the 15 months manifest. And dude, where's cock? <laughs> I don't like saying your username, man. Thank you for the 25 gifted. Low picks for the sub. Uh, all right. Are y'all ready to get into the fucking reacts? Here we go. First bit of the fucking day. 32 minutes into the stream. I appreciate everybody sticking around. Coon for the sub. Uh, and evil for the sub. Mellow for the three. Uh, and cock, thank you for the gifted. And oh, sure, thank you for the fucking hundred dollar donut, dude. Evil for the sub. First vet. Uh, lock in here. I never reset my sub goal either. So I don't even know how many subs we're technically at today. It's probably like half of that. Uh, but like mainly all from cock. God damn, dude. You gotta change your username. Evil for the sub, noun for the three. Donations don't work for me. I want to say thank you for everything you do. Been sub for more than two years. You're actually being a lot more than people think. All right. First vet. Lock in. All right, cock. Yo, thank you for the 25 gifteds again, man. I appreciate the fucking subs. Thank them if you got a sub. Thank you for the fucking 25 gifteds, bro. All right, let's lock in for the fucking stream here. Again, if you want to donate, exclamation point SP, uh, or click the um, pinned uh, comment uh, by Fiddledings in the top above chat. Uh, I'll probably do a pause from reading the donos for this video, and then I'll read them all in a lump um, after the video ends, okay? So if you do a dono and it takes me five minutes to read it, that's my apologies. Slice for the subcock. Thank you for the 20 gifts. It's again, Lord, for the sub. Also, if you want to join the Discord, exclamation point Discord. Mods, don't pin the Discord link because I want the dono link uh, pinned, but uh, if you want to send videos for, for me to react to or games to be to play in the video, same uh, video suggestion tab, game suggestion tab, uh, join, and you can send uh, your video recommendations and game recommendations. Slice and Lord for the sub. All right. Lock in here, chat. Oh, I didn't even read the title. Ten-year-old buys uh, designer, instantly regrets it. Look at this cute pencil case I found for you. Cute? You're kidding, right? I can't be seen with that. I want a Kipling pencil case. Oh, no. This one's $54. $54? For a fucking pencil case? Shadow, thank you for the 10 gifted. Thank them if you got a sub. Thank you for the 10 gifted there, Shadow5064. I appreciate the fucking subs, bro. What the fuck is a Kipling pencil case? 
Is that like is that like the designer brand of pencil cases? And why the hell is it fifty four dollars? It's smaller than a fucking lunchbox. How many pencils? Yeah, that's ma that's massive for a pencil case though. I thought pencil cases were about yay big. What are you what are you taking fucking a four hundred number twos into that bitch? It's like ten times more expensive. Mia, they both get the job done just fine. How nah, about you know what really <laughs> pisses me off? It doesn't piss me off, but I think it's stupid. When parents buy their toddlers Jordans or any designer shit, like if you're buying your two-year-old a pair of fucking Yeezys or like mochas, what are you doing? Like it's the same, dude. Yeah, they're a little bit cheaper, right? But it's still probably a good 150 bucks for toddler shoes which they're not going to be able to wear in like three weeks. <laughs> in like three weeks. <laughs> they're going to wear that bitch for a month, and then you're going to have to throw them out. What are you going to do with them? Return them? Heidi for the sub, Alex for the two. You can make a donation thing on your Instagram so people can donate to a charity on your Insta page if you wanted to, of course. What do you mean? Could I do that with Tiltify? I think you mean um. on my page under my bio, I could have a dono tab. Uh, but that's not through Tiltify. Hide for the sub. I could see if World Suicide Prevention has one on Instagram. Uh, but that's through a whole different, like, platform, I'm pretty sure. Unless they have Tiltify. One, two for the for the 20 to suicide prevention. Lost two close friends to suicide in the past. I'm sorry to hear that. Everybody struggling with mental health can get the help that they need. Foxman for the 50 or for the 500 biddies. Uh, I watched your YouTube videos on VRFF. Baldi's Basics today. So funny. Hope you have a good day. Thank you, uh, Foxman. Alex for the two. Uh, Leo for the five. Chops for the three. Cloak for... Yo, Cloak, Cloak just, Cloak just refunded, Cloak just refunded the money I sent him for editing into a fucking donation. What a W guy. What a W guy. Oh my God. W editor. Cloak bros, we so back. Cloak bros, we so back. Thank you for the fucking 150 uh, to Suicide Prevention Cloak. Thank you, Jeff, for doing this wonderful charity stream. If you're reading this and going through something, please trust things will get better. Reach out to somebody and tell uh, somebody what you're going through. Trust me in that you will be... <laughs> Uh, you will be happy you did reach out. Take care of yourselves. W fucking message. KO for the sub. Shout out, thank you for the sand gift. It's again. FaZe uh, and Lord for the subs. Uh, and thank you for the fucking 150, Cloak. I appreciate that. We get this one and save some money. I don't care if they both get the job done. If I show up to school with that ugly thing, it'll be so embarrassing. <sighs> it's not that bad. So embarrassing. You're 10. You'd show up to school in a fucking Lightning McQueen backpack. That's what I had. And I was the shit. You were the shit if you had a Lightning McQueen backpack. You pull up, you got your favorite fucking cartoon movie on your fucking backpack. Pull up with the fucking Thomas the Tank Engine lunchbox. That was me. I, I remember I had a Thomas the Tank Engine lunchbox. No, uh, I need to have the best of everything. Uh. I'm getting this. I love Aaron Bradby's new collection. How about this one? Ew, I can't put my food in that. Yo, if I had a kid and they bitched at me this much, I'd send them to class with nothing. I would say you're going to carry your pencils and your books. Here's cargo pants with 30 pockets. Have fun. Here's your pencils. Put that in the fucking ankle pocket. Put your sandwich, put your sandwich in your back pocket. Make sure to take it out of your back pocket before you sit, though. Or else you're not gonna have fucking lunch. Dickhead. <laughs> like what? Why is she folding to her child? Like she could just say, no, I'm not buying you this. She has five dollars to her name. Dude, I remember when I was 10, I, I, I had a yard sale one time, and I made $10, and I thought I was fucking rich. Well, what's wrong with it? Look, either I'm getting the Vera Bradley, or I'm not eating lunch. Do you want- All right, don't eat. Flat out. All right, don't eat. Need to starve. And you know what I'm a- and you know- you know what I'm a packer for lunch? Just lettuce to the brim. Just just un unseasoned 
just washed lettuce in a whole box, right? That's that's her lunch, right? At some point, you'll eat, right? You'll be hungry. I didn't think so. Unwashed lettuce? Oh, now right out of the ground. Just, yo, you know how, like, in your yard, you could find, like, onions that just kind of, like, casually... Cock for the 50 gifted! What the fuck? Cock345, thank you for the 50 gifted fucking subs. Dumb in the chat for that thing. If you got a sub, thank you for the 50 fucking gifted. Cock345. What the fuck, dude? So many subs today. Uh, thank you. And fearsome fire for the fucking raid. W raid. Fearsome fire for the raid of 75 viewers. My God. Alex for the one. Light skin for the one. Supreme for the one. It isn't through Tiltify. It's some through MetaPay, but they do have a suicide hotline one. Okay. Supreme for the thousand pennies. My father passed when I was 14. Spend uh, three years with an alcoholic mother until the end. Move cross country to Texas to be with my grandpa. Struggling day by day. Uh, uh, and after three honest attempts, I will say my life changed. For the better, last year after I met my girl, learned to understand there's more in a life. Well, that's a dud. AQ for the 20. Frick suicide. Uh, I like for the 5. And SW for the 20. Uh, 128 for the 20. Uh, there will be hard times. Whatever you're going through, light at the end of the tunnel. Everybody can get the help that they need. I already read those. I was like, I feel like I read that. Shadow for the 20 to, to tiltify. And co cock for the 25 gifted again. What the fuck? Thank you for the gifteds, man. Stop gifting subs. Damn. So many. Mac for the sub. Shout out for the 20, dude. I appreciate the subs. All right. What was I saying? I don't even remember what I was talking about. <clears throat> oh, what would be worse than unwashed lettuce? Shout out for the fucking 10 gifteds. Thank you for the 10 gifteds, Shadow. I appreciate the fucking subs, dude. Thank them if you got a sub. Thank you for the 10 gifteds. All right. Y'all know when you walk in your yard and there's just, like, onions? <laughs> All right, this isn't going to make sense. Not planted, right? Have you ever walked, like, does that, do y'all know what I'm talking about? Like, if you're walking in your yard and there's, like, a longer piece of grass, if you pull that out, it's an onion, right? Just a whole box full of those. Just, like, ground onions. Or not... <laughs> Ground onions like there's tree onions. Grass onions, I mean. Shadow for the fucking 10 gifteds. It's a type of garlic? I thought it was an onion. Spring onions? I don't know. Do they grow All in right, my grass? I think you got everything you need for school. So. Oh my <laughs> Dry rice. Oh my god. That would be. Yo, I feel like that's borderline child abuse. If you sent your kid to class with just a lunchbox of, like, uncooked rice. <laughs> like, can you even eat that? Like, is that digestible? Shadow for the 10 gifteds, dude. I appreciate that. Supreme for the sub. XD for the 10. Lost my dad to suicide when I was four. I'm happy to donate. Suicide is not the answer. Agreed. And I'm sorry that you lost your father. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. I need this. Oh, honey. I don't think you need an expensive clothes. $150, dude. What backpacks did y'all have when you were in fucking school? Like, I had some cheap-ass shit, right? Like, I uh, in high school and in, like, college now, like, yeah, I'll have, like, one of those, like, heavy-duty backpacks that just, like, holds a lot. But I would not have some crazy shit, like, ever. Fucking $150 for a backpack. I feel like my backpack now is probably like 60 bucks, maybe. I don't really remember, though, because I feel like you buy a backpack, you could theoretically use that backpack for, like, 10 years. Like, as long as you don't fuck it up or put, like, 45 pounds of shit in it. All right. Uh, Cock, thank you for the gifteds again, man. Uh, actually, stop gifting subs now. You've given so many. Uh, Cock, thank you for the fucking 25 gifteds now. I appreciate that shit. Thank them if you got a sub. Thank you for the gifteds. The backpack for school. What about this one? These are good backpacks, and it's a third of the price. Ew. 
<laughs> no way. But you've already got everything. Bro, I feel like that's the backpack that I had. Else you've wanted. And this backpack is like hundred dollars more? No, 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 no! I need one that matches my lunch bag. I no. Mm -mm. <sighs> Don't you If I had a kid and they started throwing a tantrum in public to get what they wanted, I would laugh at them and then they would feel embarrassed. Like, straight up. Like, that that strategy is just not working, right? Like, oh, no, 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 no! I'm gonna start chuckling. Spans for the 10. What color is each subject in school? I'm not going, I'm not having this argument again. Tamales for the sub. Love me. Yes, of course I love you. But then we're getting this one. No way she just caved to her kid. That is actually not. I can't believe how much you spent. This is most people's monthly rent. I know. I tried to convince her to choose something more affordable, but she just threw a fit. Well, what did you have when you were a kid? I mean, did you have a $50 pencil? Children throw fits because they work. Your child won't throw a fit if you never let a fit work. They'll do it one time, and if it doesn't work, they'll stop doing it. Like, if you said no, she would eventually be like, okay, this is pointless for me to complain because I know I'm not going to get my way. Pencil case? Of course not. You know I grew up poor. I had a plastic bag for a pencil case, and I packed my lunch in a brown paper bag, and we were so broke. Brown paper bag? I packed my lunch in a brown paper bag all the time. I did that shit, I did that shit for a while because it was easier. Because then you could just throw that shit out. Like, all my snacks, I would have maybe, like, a little container for a sandwich so it wouldn't get crushed. And then I would have a paper bag full of, like, snacks. Like, chips and Oreos and stuff. Okay. Then instead of having a backpack, I had to use a grocery store tote. Okay. Why don't you explain that to her? Maybe if you tell her about how you had it when you were growing up, she'll be able to appreciate more of it. Ugh. I'm so hungry, yeah. Why isn't there anything good to eat? I want sushi. Do you want to tell her? So spill all the tea. Tell me about your guys' stuff. Horrible. You should tell him about Jacob. No way. Ew. That's one of the ugliest things I've ever seen. What are you talking about? That thing? What is this fucking high school musical? I hate how every fuck, every darn man video Every movie, every fucking TV show depicts, like, kids bullying each other as, like, like this, right? Like, this is not, this is not bullying. Like, it is bullying, but this is not real-life bullying, right? Like, real life, ew. <laughs> what are you, poor? <laughs> nice bag, brokey. Like, what? On your back, Opfi. It's just a backpack. No, this is a backpack. Complete with a matching lunchbox, of course. That's good for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> What's so funny? <laughs> oh, nothing. It's just your lunchbox doesn't even match your backpack. And it looks like some- This is not- This has never been a real conversation. This has never- No, has- Yo, for, for the fucking- for the fucking 10% of my audience that's women. Have you ever, have you ever, in, have you ever encountered bullying like this? What is this Sharpay-esque fucking high school musical? Hmm. Uh, well, your backpack doesn't even match your lunchbox. Like, I don't think anybody would ever fucking give a shit about that. Something a kindergartner would wear. My little sister's in kindergarten and she would not wear anything like that. <laughs> no way! My little sister's in kindergarten, she would never wear anything like that. Bro, I had, I used to go to, the, oh my god, what was it called? It wasn't Payless. I used to get my shoes from this really shitty store. Fuck, chat, somebody's gonna be able to name the store. And they would sell, like, $10 shoes. Like, I'm so straight up. Is it Payless? It might have been Payless. It was just a shoe store. 
right? Only shoes is what they sold. But like, ev- like the most expensive shoe they had was like forty dollars. It was all off-brand shit. And like, dude, I remember I I've told this story. I was in third grade. I had a pair of these shoes, and the sole, the bottom of the shoe fell out. I'm not even lying. Like, imagine you're wearing a shoe and then your foot just falls through the bottom. Like, the, like the whole bottom part just fell off the shoe. And I was walking barefoot for, like, the last hour of class. It was right after gym, right? Thank God it was, like, last, almost last fucking period. Or, it wasn't even periods because you were in third grade. You always had the same teacher for every subject. But it was like you had to gym break, right? You had gym, like, once a week or some shit outside of recess. And then the na- I went home that night. And I was like, Mom, I am never going back to that store. (laughs) I was like, I literally said, I was like, I don't care what shoes I have. But I actually got made fun of for that. Like, my, my, yo, my shoe, the the bottom of my shoe fell out. Like, like, I would, it was like, it was like an ankle bracelet. But it was my shoe. Smuggles for the $100 dono for fucking... Uh, suicide prevention. W stream W Joe F suicide. Thank you for the hundred. Smoggles Fern. Uh two eight seven. Hayes for the five. Jakey for the sub. RG for the twenty five to suicide prevention. Depressed for years. Big part of that was my cousin committed a while ago. I'm twenty one as well, and it was so bad it made me completely put pu- school on pause. Uh, I'm just uh now starting to find my path again. Thanks for doing this stream. No problem. And thank you for the twenty five. And I'm sure you're struggling with some stuff, but I hope it gets better. Shout out for the three and spans for the ten. I already read that. Anonymous for the two. And Smoggles, thank you for the hundred, dude. Yeah, my mom tried to give me one of these, and I told her I wouldn't be caught dead with something like this. For real? <laughs> give it back, Mia. Oops. Knock it off. Oops. Yo, couldn't she theoretically just beat that absolute piss out of this girl? Like, she's a solid foot and a half taller. Like, if I was a bully, I would never pick on somebody that is towering over me, right? Like, if you're a bully, I feel like number one rule as a bully is don't make fun of someone that could beat the shit out of you. <laughs> like, what is this logic? Uh, come back, said, love what you're doing, brother. Uh, this is why you deserve all the blessings you receive from God. Thank you for, uh, thank you for the nice message, man. Uh, Raquel for the 30 uh, for suicide prevention. Thank you for doing this fundraiser. I've attempted it before, and you've... Uh, you helping people means a lot. If you're ever going through something, just know you're uh, never alone and you don't have to go through uh, something alone. Ask for help whenever needed. Exactly. Anonymous for the two. Sorry, it's only $2. Dude, any amount is enough, right? Don't don't owe a dollar and say, sorry, this isn't enough, dude. Any Like, I, I genuinely appreciate any amount of money given to Tiltify. Or not Tiltify. Tiltify, which is uh, American Foundation for Suicide Prevention, right? Uh, any amount helps, right? It adds up. Like, even if you're given a dollar, dude, 10 people give a dollar. That's 10 bucks. It matters, right? Why would you do that? Oh, come on. I'm doing you a favor. I mean, that pencil case is so cheap and ugly anyways. You should have your mom buy you a new one. Girls usually always talk uh, about each other behind their each other's backs, never to their face. Yeah, exactly. I don't know. I don't know if that's definitively true. I would say guys will talk shit more to somebody's face than girls will. But I also think that depends on the friend group and the individual. But, like, if I'm going to say some shit about somebody I know, I'll say it to their face, right? Like, without a problem. Like, I've been in calls where I'm, like, mad at my friend and I'm talking about it and then he joins. And I don't stop talking about it. I just say, you pissed me off. <laughs> and, then, and then I have a conversation with him about it. Right? It's not like, oh, it just ends and we act like we weren't talking about it. He'll join and I'll be like, yo, good shit. You showed up. You pissed me off yesterday, dickhead. <laughs> oh, thank you for coming. Now you can fucking sit in on the conversation. My parents don't have enough money to buy me a new one. Sucks to be you then. <laughs> Mia Connolly, what do you think you're doing? You do not speak to your fellow students that way. And I need you to apologize to Lydia this instant. Apologize for what? It's true. 
Bye, Brokey. <laughs> We're so disappointed in you. We thought we raised you better than this. What made you think it was okay to be so- You guys are like the worst parents ever. What do you mean you raised her better than this? You gave her everything she ever wanted. So mean to the girl. That's not being a good parent. As, you know, on paper, that seems like being a good father or being a good mother, giving your kid whatever they want. But it's not because then it makes them fucking assume that they deserve everything. Lydia was asking for it. <laughs> I mean, she's lucky I didn't say anything about her clothes. <laughs> you should have seen them. Look, Mia, not everyone is as fortunate as you. Just because mommy and daddy can afford to buy you very nice things doesn't give you the right to make fun of children who have less privilege than you. Facts! Your mom is right. You have to be more sensitive to the fact that a lot of kids your age are not able to have what you have. Whatever. We're rich. So what if other kids don't have money? That's not my problem. No, I hate, I hate, I hate it. I hate it when kids will say, we're rich. Bitch, bitch. Bitch, bitch, you're not rich. You're not rich. Whenever somebody says that, bro, whenever somebody says, oh, yeah, I'm rich. Bitch, you're not rich. Your dad and your mom are rich, right? You're not rich. Your parents are rich. You ain't got shit. You have no money. You have no money. Zero, right? You might be rich when they die and you get your inheritance. You, you live in their house. They own your car, right? Yeah, they bought you a car. It's not in your name. You have no net worth. Your net worth is the money in your pocket. 50 bucks. Problem? Can you even understand how little your mom and dad had when we were growing up? Don't know. Don't care. Hmm. You know what? Enough? is enough. Mm -hmm. Since you want to be this way? You think there's actually kids that are this young that are that like spoiled though? Like that act like this? Like I know there's like spoiled kids but like to this extent uh, I feel like really rich, really, really rich parents, kids. Not always. But like if you're like a multi-millionaire and you just always buy your kid whatever they want I feel like they would end up like this. We're taking away your Kipling pencil pack, your Vera Bradley backpack, and you can say goodbye to the matching lunch bag. Bye-bye. Hmm. What? No. That's so unfair. You can't take my stuff away. Oh, yes, we can, because clearly you're not going to learn how to appreciate them. <laughs> and this is where the kid says, this is child abuse. I'm calling Child Protective Services. Oh, uh, oh this is child abuse. Until they're taken away. And until you learn your lesson, Dad is going to lock them away. Say goodbye. What am I supposed to use instead? We have just the thing. Here you go. That. Ew. What is that? Yo, what is with Darman just randomly adding music to fucking videos now? I feel like it's every new Darman video just has like a weird like music like <laughs> like collage, just like like a two minute timeline where nobody talks and it's just like showing sceneries, like the last like five ones that we've seen. So I'm on for the three. Take her expensive stuff, give it away in front of her, and buy her only cheap stuff. I was going to say that. Like, take all of her clothes and then buy her cheaper stuff. Take all of her, like, stuff. Like, all of her belongings and then just buy her cheaper versions of it. And then she has to deal with that, right? <coughs> Tiny for the three. This video is crazy. Anyways, WStream, uh, have a good uh, rest of your night. The big stake for the sub shadow for the 10. Uh, she, she gonna have a pillowcase. <laughs> You take her mattress and just give her one pillow. Oh, my God. <laughs> you give her a straw. Oh, my. Yo, that would be that. Okay, that would be, like, too far. Imagine, like, while she's not home, you take her mattress and then give her, like, a straw bed. <laughs> like you're in the 1700s or some shit. 
Like she she like walks into her room. There's like a pig in the corner. And this is your bed now. <laughs> like what the fuck? Shadow for the ten. Want to see her dub? I would give more, but my bank will probably think my card got stolen. Salty for the two. Is anybody in chat who's thinking about suicide? Choosing life over suicide is a powerful act of resilience. Life is full of ups and downs and also filled with opportunities of growth, happiness, and meaningful connections. Smash for the three. What's the best candy? Reese's Cups. Coke for the, or cock for the one. Last dollar. Also F suicide uh, because nobody, uh, no one should think about it. Uh, haze for the two. Never commit suicidal. Uh, it doesn't help stop the pain. It drags it to somebody else. Keck for the five. God is always great. Just know today, uh, a today's a blessing. Tomorrow will be better. Chino for the ten. I was the one that commented that you liked on Instagram about my, uh, my uncle passing from suicide. I want to say, uh, love you, man. And again, I appreciate uh, you for real. Love you. Anybody in chat considering, please don't. Uh, love y'all. Fuck suicide. Raquel for the 30. Uh, I've been said before. Uh, you've helped. I've always gone through. Uh, if you guys are going through something, uh, you're never alone. You don't have to go through this uh, alone. Ask for help when needed. Uh, I think I read that. I don't remember. Amex for the sub. Or the chalkboard? My God. Mellow for the sub. Yo, one of my college classes this semester has a chalkboard. Brutal. I don't know. Like, why do they use chalkboards anymore? Like, some professors like them more, which I don't get. Because I feel like that shit's just old. Like, what the fuck is the point of using chalk? I've never had a chalkboard. Dude, I remember in second grade. When I was in, like, second and third grade, there wasn't even whiteboards. Like, they had, like, other schools had whiteboards. My school didn't. And then it was, like, when I hit fourth grade, they swapped out all the, the chalkboards for whiteboards. Somebody said, back in my day. Shut the fuck up, dude. You're acting like I'm 40. Back in my day. How, how old was I in second grade? What year was that? How old are you in second grade? <laughs> eight? If I was eight and seven, that would have been 2010. In 2010, I was eight. Shadow for the fucking 10 gifted. Thank you for the 10 gifted, Shadow. Thank them if you got us up. Thank you for the 10 gifted. You as you leave him. Pencils in a Ziploc bag. How much do you think they pay these actors at Darman? Like for for these videos, probably fucking nothing. In all honesty, like this girl probably made like two hundred dollars. Because, like, he, I, I mean, 2.4 million views. He probably made, like, 20 grand off this video because he probably has an insane watch time. Maybe less than 20 grand. He probably made, like, 15, 16 grand. You have to pay so much for production, and there's so many actors. She probably got more, actually, because she's the main character and the parents. She probably got, like, 500 bucks. Like, you all think that's worth it? I mean, to a degree, yeah, because it could give her, it could give her and all the other actors like a foot in the door for other acting opportunities. But I don't know how much credibility Darman gives you for acting. Oh, my face. Five hundred for a kid is insane. Yeah, but like that's all. That's also a problem in like acting in general. Is like kids get underpaid drastically, right? Uh, cause they know that you don't have to take care of yourself. So they'll just, they, it's like, it's a whole thing in Hollywood. There's like, there's the actor strike going on in general, but there's also been problems in the past where they'll just like, they won't pay kids any money. Hi, honey. Even was... though they're also technically working. <laughs> if not harder than most of the other actors in this video. Cool. Horrible. I can't believe how mean other kids can be. You were right, mom. About what? When... You said I won't appreciate what I have until it's gone. I feel bad for the way I treated Lydia now. I like to hear that. It sounds like you truly learned your lesson. Which means 
that you can get your stuff back. Seriously? Absolutely. Oh my gosh. I'm never gonna take this for granted again. Damn, I she ain't gonna give it to the kid that she made fun of? I thought that would be a real Darman twist. That would have been a real Darman twist. She gave her backpack to the kid she made fun of. I hope not. Bang! There it is! She's gonna- Oh my god, I, pred I predict every fucking Darman movie ever. I predict, I predict every Darman fucking game, or not game, fucking YouTube video. Right there. Um, I'll be right back. Oh my god. It's too, it's too easy, man. It's too easy, dude. Okay. Hey, I'm He watched! He watched this video 100%, chat! I've been saying this since day fucking one. Joe pre-watches his videos. Um, Lydia, wait up. Can I talk to you? Why? So you can make fun of me some more? No, uh, I promise. I just wanted to say sorry for the way I treated you. Oh, she's not going to give him the backpack? That. Thanks. I appreciate that. And to show you how sorry I really am, I wanted to give you this. No, I know how expensive that stuff is. I a fucking pencil case? Sorry I bullied you. Here's a pencil case. Sorry... Sorry I roasted the actual living shit out of you. Right? And I made you I made you hate school for fucking three weeks. Here's a pencil case. It matches your backpack now. Dilemma for the five gifted and the individual sub. Honey for the five. Uh, w stream fuck suicide. Uh, for the three, today's my birthday. Happy birthday. Zaddy for the sub. Uh, Jack for the 25. Look out for yourself and seek assistance to make it better for you. Dub. Robbie for the five. W for the stream. Neck for the sub. Xander for the 20. Neck for the sub. Uh, what are we at dono wise? I feel like we're at the goal. Damn, a thousand eight hundred and eighty six. Oh, we hit the extra YouTube video for the week. I'm already uploading today. Chat, what day do y'all want the extra YouTube video? I already post Sundays, Wednesdays, Fridays, uh, and Tuesdays. So do you want it tomorrow or well today I'm already posting one chat. That's not the extra video. Would you guys rather have the extra video Thursday or Tuesday? Or no, Thursday or Monday. I'm an idiot. Monday or Thursday. All right, everybody's saying Monday. Oh, a lot of people are saying Thursday. Mods, could you do a poll on that? I'll let my chat choose when I post that. W Frog for the sub. It'll be a main channel extra post. I already posted an extra video last week on my fucking gaming because uh, and I actually posted an extra video this week because the Taylor Swift video got fucked up initially. Then I posted the extra one on the fucking gaming last week because they fucking age-restricted my video like a bunch of cucks. Which pissed me off. Uh, hold up. Oh my god. One minute. Gotta respond to the bro uh, the girlfriend. All right. Dylan for the 20. Thank you for everything you've done for this community. You helped me on my wellness journey. Lost 30 pounds in three months. I'm more confident than I've ever been. Also, for anybody going through a tough time, you're never alone. And even if you feel like you are, thanks again. Oh, even if you feel like you are. Thanks again, Joe. W Frog for the sub. All right. Sis, plus, I broke your last one. Are you sure? Yeah. Thanks. This really means a lot. Well, I'll see you at school tomorrow. Wait. Are your parents not picking you up? We, uh, actually don't have a car. So I just walk home. Oh, you don't have a fucking car? Oh my god, I take back everything I fucking said. Yo, guys, this bitch doesn't have a fucking car. Oh my god, thanks for the pencil case, dweeb. Oh my god, what a loser. Fucking hell. Oh my gosh, <laughs> do you want to ride? <laughs> I'm sure my parents No my car? Oh my god. Oh my god, thanks for that shit. Fine. No way. You guys have a Porsche? I've never been in one before. If you want, you could come to my house and then we could drop you off. Sure, that sounds fun. <laughs> Let's go. Hey mom, hey dad, I'm bringing a friend. Bro, they didn't even agree to that shit. If I'm the parent, I'm like, I'm not dropping this kid off. <laughs> like, straight up. I'm I'm not oh where do you live? Oh 45 fucking minutes away. Okay, yeah, I'm not trying I'm not dropping that kid off. Hey, get the fuck out of here. Christian for the fucking three. K 
Can you read my earlier message? I donated 10. Piero for the sub, 9. Heon for the sub, Sander for the 1. TJ for the 10. Uh, Dang Boy for the sub. Uh, I'll try and find it. I don't see it. Can you tell me what you said? Uh, Because a, a lot of it's blocked by uh, all of Cox's subs that he gave. Or they gave. Like, how long ago did you send the dono? Because I don't see it. Uh, I just scrolled all the way to the beginning of stream. I don't see it. You're going to have to tell me what you said. Actually, I might be able to look it up here. Hold up. Oh, I fi I sent it five minutes into chat. Like, you sent it in chat? Or you sent it five minutes into the stream? All right, hold up. All right, here it is. Huge W for this. I was depressed and suicidal after a breakup over six months. And uh, happy you raised awareness. Uh, I'm an incoming D1 runner. I've been heading to gym three times a week uh, because of you, plus running 55 miles a week. Thank you for everything. 55 miles a week. Holy fuck, dude. That is insane. And think of the 10. All right. The consequences of messing with a K9. Code Blue Camp video here, chat. Lock in. Gold for the three. Football game Wednesday. Wish me luck. Good luck. Uh, Molden Piero for the sub. Look on the football game there, man. All right. New blue for the four. Condolences to anybody who lost family uh, this year, whether suicide or not. Uh, never feel bad for reaching out and gold for the three. All right. On April 20. Max Fed. 26th, 2023. This was recently. Dispatched received a call about a domestic disorder. Not recently. How, how long ago was April? I was like half a year ago. Conduct Products incident. For the three. In Campbell's I heard you died in Ohio. Sport, Wisconsin. The caller reported her 25-year-old ex- <laughs> You're so hella derpy, bro. Oh, my God. Oh, the derp man himself. Oh, he's so fucking, he's so fucking hilarious. Oh, what is blood waffling about? Derp, Ohio, skibbity toilet. I've been in the hills, fucking dudes. I've been in the hills, fucking dudes. I heard you died in Ohio in the hills, man. Boyfriend named Bo was. I gotta rewind. I fucking I that shit pissed me off. I gotta zone in. <laughs> Extreme for the five. Suicide something. Uh, not something to turn an eye on. Uh, been and still am struggling with depression for six years. We're going my animation career. It's getting better. Good luck to everybody out there, and remember to take care of yourself. Sorry for sending bits. I already had some. You're good. If you already had some, that's fine. I'm just saying, like, don't buy new bits if you could just donate instead. Caller reported her 25-year-old ex-boyfriend named Bo was pounding on her door, refusing to leave, and making threats with a possible firearm. Upon reaching the scene, deputies found Bo outside the residence, and he became extremely agitated in response to their presence. He refused to comply with their commands and was threatening to shoot. During negotiations, he admitted to having a 9mm handgun concealed in his vest. Due to the incident, residents in the neighborhood were either evacuated or asked to shelter in place. Wow. A perimeter was then promptly established to confine Bo within the front yard. That's a big ass house! Backyard, too. Pretty lit up here. So, if we come across the street, come up from the south side, Mr. Nico for the 10 gifted. Thank you for the 10 gifted, Mr. Nico 284. Thank them if you got a sub. Thank you for the fucking 10 gifted. Pentecost for the three says you might want to scan this. Retrex for the sub. Why would I need to scan this? Josh for the sub dominator for the three. Let me put you onto a restaurant, the original pancake house in Woodbridge, New Jersey. The original pancake house. What do they sell there? Pancakes? I mean, probably that's probably it. I mean, what else would they fucking sell?
Hold up. All right. Bro, it won't open! All right. There it is. Okay. Lock in. Looks like we have some pretty good cover. Okay. With some decent sized trees that we could maybe somewhat get into position for. Uh, Mr. Nico, can you play Raymond Legends? What is Raymond Legends? 18 foot for the 15. My grandmother took her own life last year, uh, August 20th. It was so random and unexpected. It was an eye opener. However, I appreciate your streams. I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, and thank you for the 500 pennies, dude. Uh, Mr. Nico says, play Raymond Legends. The video game. If you have a video game you want me to play, exclamation point Discord, send it in the Discord uh, video or video game session tab. I think it sucks that the house is angled, so you might be on this side. Cross Let's go to the corner to see if we can see where he's at. Joe, when are you live? 2 p.m. EST on weekends and 4.30 on weekdays. Today's a react day in the charity stream. Tomorrow I'm live at 4.30 EST, continuing Subnautica. Uh, Tuesday, I'm not live. Wednesday, I'm live at 4.30 doing... Um, Joyville and Scary Reacts. Thursday, I'll be live at 4.30 doing Fortnite, maybe Fall Guys, and then continuing Miles Morales. Uh, Friday's Reacts and the next Saturday is either Prison Sim or VR games. I'll do the actual hands. Yeah, so it's all for the sub. Um, I got to hit it so we get to the point. I'll switch Two one. weeks ago, you were talking shit on Subnautica. What happened? Nimble, find the clip where I was talking shit on Subnautica. Uh, slow for the sub. I don't think I ever talked shit on Subnautica. I said that my chat said that, uh, Below Zero was bad. I said I would play the original Subnautica. I've been saying I would play Subnautica for, like, two months. Sala for the one. Used to have suicidal thoughts when I was younger for personal reasons. Want to say thank you. You helped me a lot. Uh, and then they added a chatter saying, don't kill yourself. Uh, I hope you aren't joking about that. If you are, get some, if you aren't, get some help. Is somebody in my chat saying they're they're gonna, they're gonna kill themselves? Their username doesn't even show up. So. Bless me, folks. Did you say do you want me to hold lethal then? Oh hey. fuck, he's right there. Well, he's facing away from us, so if he jumps for us, he's jump for us. Okay, let's fast forward to where we fucking see the guy. Jesus Christ. Let's get let's get on to where we see the guy. The final thing I have to get is dog. See if he gives up once he gets his phone back. And if that doesn't happen, we're going to hit him with two less lethals and send the dog at the same time. Okay. Like when he sends it, well, you can follow behind us, but we're going to be slow getting up to him. Yeah. Yeah, once, once the dog's on the bite. Hey. Once it's on the bike, Burkholz will fall in behind us. I would be like, genuinely terrified if if a, a fucking police canine dog chased me. Like that is uh, that is mortifying. Like, would you guys would you guys keep running? I, if I if I heard a dog running or barking in my direction, I'm laying on the ground. Somebody redeem Dan. Like I'm not having that motherfucker bite my arm off. Take me to coast what can you do? I mean, you're not going to outrun the motherfucker, dude. They run like fucking 30 miles an hour. We'll grab his arm. We'll stabilize his... Whatever arm the dog's not on. Stabilize his arm. The yeah. final thing if we grab his dog, then someone grab his arm when it comes off. And yep. And we just stack up on dude, this Dude, what if they kill the dog? Our Burkholz can have the hood of it. You should be able to set him from the front of there, right? And then so we can go close. around him on the Wait, back. why are they doing this? What? They called the cops on this guy because he had a gun at his ex-girlfriend's house. Like, why is this? I don't remember why this is happening. That's what the TPV pulls up, basically. The game's on. You aren't, you aren't outrunning most dogs, period. Name one dog you can outrun. In a sprint? My dog. Any small dog. A chihuahua. A bulldog. Honestly, I think I could outrun most medium-sized dogs. A Shih Tzu. Yeah, like, there's a million dogs you can outrun. There's a lot you can't. Like, Dobermans, German Shepherds. 
Like those things are gonna fucking smoke you. But if you're right, if you're running against like a golden retriever or a lab, there's if you're like fast, you could probably outrun the dog. In a in a short sprint, if it's like two hundred meters, it's gonna catch you. But if it's like a hundred meters, you might beat it. Dominator for three. As a fellow New Jersey resident, where is the worst town to be stuck in at night? I think it's Camden. Yeah, it's not even arguable. It's definitively Camden. I can outrun a Greyhound? No, you can't. Oh, I said no. A Great Dane? I don't even know how fast they are. A wiener dog. Imagine the police dog is just a... All right, send in the canine. <laughs> it's, just a, it's just some little dog trotting across the grass. Going like four miles an hour. Send in the canine. Take off the muzzle. <laughs> let let Lucifer run loose. <laughs> they, they let him out of the... They have to pick him up out of the car because he can't jump down. They give him some crazy ass name. Let Ares, let Ares, <laughs> release Ares towards the opponent. As the SWAT team approached in an armored vehicle, they utilized less lethal rounds that made contact with him. However, he fled on foot. In response... Why did they just shoot that motherfucker with a beanbag gun? Like, literally, literally go in the armored vehicle with, like, a hole in the fucking door and just shoot him with a beanbag gun until he falls over. A9 Rip was set free and successfully sank his teeth into Bo, causing him to drop his handgun. Damn. Oh, fuck! Whoa, 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 fuck! Because it's breaking his arm, dude. <laughs> Oh my god, and that dog's going like this. <laughs> ripping his arm, too. It's not like he's just holding him down. He's ripping his arm. He gets shot, it's TOS. No, he no, he doesn't. Dude, he gets shot with a beanbag gun. They literally said, we're going to use non-lethal rounds. No! Put your hands up! Hands up! Hands up! Hey, Parky! Parky, stay back! Yeah, get him! Yeah, get him! Wait, wait. Hands! Hands! How bad do you think that hurts to get bit by a dog? Like a police dog. Like, are they biting full force? Hey, give us your hands! Give us your hands! I would say like an 8 out of 10. Probably pretty fucking bad. Daisy Showcase? I'll do it after this video. I, I did! Uh, Take the hand! Alright. I, I can't do anything. Take it here. You're good, man. You're good. Take the hand, dude. I'm not resisting. You're good. You're good. I'm not resisting. Take the hand. A guy like me, it wouldn't hurt at all. Let's just say if that canine bit me, I'd just fucking eat that shit. I'd just add. I, you know, I'm, I'm not trying to say I'm built different or anything, but I, I think I could shake it off. Take it, take it. I'm not resisting. Take the. Here. Are you injured at all? Do you have any other weapons on you at all? I, I was injured, but I'm fine. Okay. Uh, I lost the clip. It's somewhere on the property. I don't know if I'm fine. You okay? okay. No I'm more, fine, are yeah. you okay? Yeah, you I'm good? fine. I'm no, okay. No more guns on you, though? No, I swear to God, okay. dude. You're good, man. Hey, we'll work Why did he have the gun be to begin with if he caved so fast? You know what I mean? Like, I feel like he was, like, so keen on, like, yeah, I'm going to keep this shit strapped and run. Maybe he didn't know they were coming. I think he was probably just standing outside of their house. Everything okay? The gun's there, but the, the clip's gone. You're good. I don't know. We're going to roll you onto this side. We're going to check your you waistband, guys, okay, sir? What best if you got to go find it? I don't You're know fine. where it went. I'm fine. You're good. I'm in bed. Do you need an ambulance at all? No, I'm all good. Okay. Those are my gloves. Maybe it's like, I don't know where the clip went. We'll, we'll worry about all that later. Okay? Why was he arrested to begin with, though? What happened? Like, did I... I feel like I zoned out. It was somebody called it on him because he had, like, it was his ex and, yeah, outside with a handgun or some shit. Uh, there's no other weapons. You're good. No needles or nothing. Why was he standing outside of his ex-girlfriend's house with a fucking gun? 
Be careful for my back pocket. My bike key is in there. If you please don't lose it. You're good. Oh, I can't. I can't take it anywhere. Then. That's the only key I got. This one right here. Yes, sir. I'm gonna keep this one in your front pocket. Yes, sir. Okay? That's that the only key I got. Everybody's good. Right. Did the dog get you, or was it just yeah, your jacket? Yeah, got me twice. Was it? Your... Did it go through, or just your jacket? It probably, probably went through, dog. Okay. I'm fine. I'm used to it. Okay. Yeah, I'm used to it. What do you mean I'm used to it? What does that mean? This has happened before. You've gotten bit by a fucking police dog in the past. Alright, boss. I'm gonna roll you on your other side. I'm gonna check your other side. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. What's the boss? No around in the no chamber. chamber. Well, the mag's right there, so. Yeah, we're just making sure you're safe for our safety, right? That's, we don't want anything yeah, else happening. It's fine. I don't, I don't got anything. Which arm did the dog get? My left right there. Your left? Okay. Uh, my, my I left. would rather a German Shepherd be running at me, though, than, like, a Cane Corso. Like, if I was running from any dog... A cane corso might be one of the scariest dogs to be running from. Like this fucking thing, dude. If imagine this full speed, just like gaining on you, like you're running as fast as you can and you hear it gaining on you. Just like the, like, like getting slow. Like you can't turn around, but like, you know, it's get, I, I don't. That would be the scariest shit a can a can go scarier. Yeah, but aren't those like wolf dogs almost? Scariest dog breeds. It'd be only a minor inconvenience for a guy like me. A Doberman, a, no, a Tibetan Mastiff, yeah, but like, a t like what are the odds a Tibetan Mastiff's gonna be running at you? <laughs> Yeah, no, that would be, okay, a Tibetan Mastiff, a Tibetan Mastiff running at you might be, <laughs> I might die before it kills me, right? Like, I might die before it even reaches me. Like, I like I probably have a heart attack. Like, that's a borderline bear running it. It's cuddly, though. No, it's not, dude. It's like 280 pounds. And, and it's fucking mad. Sewer and Brian for the sub, Layla, for the fucking $100 dono. Uh, to suicide prevention, thank you for the fucking hundred dollar dono. You and Brookie Cookie are so cute together. F suicide. Thank you for the fucking hundred dollar dono and the nice message. Slow for the three. <laughs> Never seen more agreeable or relatable influencer or streamer. Just heard that, uh, that it's donating to a really good cause. Also, did you get the New Jersey storms that other night? Uh, shit was crazy. No. Wait, yeah. I don't know. What other night? Callie and Cappy for the sub yesterday. Joe Poop and Lozy for the one. Uh, bad for the sub, Mason for the six. For my father, I lost to suicide three years ago. I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, Henry for the three. Top three favorite Kid Cudi songs. Damn. In no specific order, day and night, um, uh, Hold up. Let me find them. I literally have my top three at the bottom of my fucking list. Yeah, number one is definitively soundtrack to my life. Then day and night. And probably pursuit of happiness. Uh, all right. Sewer for the sub. I hate suicide for the one. MX for the five. Uh, red for the six. Thanks for being an awesome content creator. Andrew for the 10. If you're ever dealing with suicidal thoughts or anything along those lines, please talk to somebody. Check on your family and friends. You never know. Uh, when times get bad, they'll get better. Exactly. The forearm. Uh, yeah, y'all want to go to the different video, though? This one's kind of boring. Like, I was expecting this one to be, like, high intensity, but I feel like the only thing that was interesting was, like, that one bite. Yeah, we'll go to the uh, Tyler Oliveira video. So, bro, show for the three. Super glad to help reach the goal for the Serene Flint for the three. Pyhawk for the sub. Wait, did we reach the goal? Barbary for the four. What's your opinion on Maryland? I haven't been there in, like, years. Oh, shit. We're at $2,039.89. 2 
We fucking hit the goal, chat. What a fucking dub. Only an hour and a half into stream. Should we raise it? I'll raise it another 500. Save. Because we're still going to be live for another, like, two, two and some change. All right. There it is. Okay. $2,039, dude. That's fucking nuts. I appreciate you guys. Damn, you know? You know I'm feeling it. You know I'm feeling it. I'm feeling the dono. I'm feeling the dono myself. We're dropping a bomb here, chat. We're dropping a bomb here. Oh, God damn it. I got to sign in. Motherfucker. 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 Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Oh, the Daisy Showcase, too. Did somebody actually redeem the Daisy Showcase? All right. How much are we talking? When I say bomb, I don't mean like some crazy shit, bro. I mean like a big dono. Right. Fucking hell, dude. My phone's glitching out. Okay. Hold up. 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 It's sending. It's sending. It's sending. Chat. Pause. Chat. Suspense. Wait. 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 Okay. It's sent. Where is it, it going to show up? It showed up. Hold up. Hold up. Whoopang! Hold up. Whoopang! Oh my god, thank you, me, for the $250 donor to fucking suicide profession. Uh, Spence for the one country music, different type of music. Uh, just listening to Heading South by Zach Bryan, uh, and you will agree. Barberry for the four. What do you mean, and I will agree? All right, hold up. I gotta go get Daisy real quick. Uh, but now we're at $2,290. Er, $2, Let me go grab Daisy real quick. All right, coming down. She had to take a shit. She was taking a shit. Come here. Look at a Bobby. Look at a Bobby. W dog.
Swaski for the five. Sorry, uh, I can only donate 15, but I appreciate the suicide awareness a few years ago. It was a bad place. See people like you raise awareness, gives me faith in humanity. Joe Bar for the one. Uh, line for the sub train for the 30 to suicide awareness. W streamer for raising suicide awareness. Lost a friend of this year. It sucks. I'm sorry to hear that. Quit for the 15. Wanted to give you a quote that helped me through some tough times in my life when I was suicidal. When you feel like giving up, just remember why you held on for so long. Uh, MX Gibby for the three. You didn't read my last one, uh, but F cancer. What was your last one? Uh, I think I'm caught up on everything. I don't, I don't, what was your last dono? All right. Sorry, I can't donate. I don't have any money, but I had a friend commit suicide. It's truly a terrible thing. That's fine. Even if you can't donate money, you just like supporting the stream and supporting the charity in general and like just the idea of suicide prevention is good enough, right? Like obviously like the donations help, but I'm saying like even if you're just supporting the idea of suicide prevention, that's great. Jay for the 50 for uh for fucking suicide prevention. Been fighting for my life for years and it's never easy. I really appreciate content creators like you who push the importance of suicide prevention. Had too many people in my life go uh, through with it. I don't want anybody to have to deal with that BS. Thank you, Joe. No problem. Trey for the sub bowl for the three. You should do a drinking stream. Not right now. Andrew for the 355. Life is worth living. It is. All right. Lock in here, chat. I investigated the city that burns homeless people alive. Homeless camp. This is the zone. The largest homeless camp in Phoenix, Arizona, with a thousand plus people living outdoors in deadly hot 110 plus degree weather. Wow. Amidst rampant drug use and brutal violence. As the city of Phoenix has ordered this camp to be destroyed, where will these people go and how will they survive the record breaking heat? So I brought my friend Kevin, a leading expert in homelessness and Kevin! drug addiction, to hit the streets. The goat! And figure out what's going on here. Kevin, what are your thoughts on this place? In the zone is a very high concentration of homeless. There's approximately seven to 900 people in really just this very few block radius. Right now, we're in a car blasting AC. The All right, this guy is currently threatening me with an ax right now. I'm just going to try and calm him down here so he doesn't kill me. The moment you step outside, it is you know, sometimes people are hostile and you just got to, you know, I've been stabbed a few times, uh, but, you know, uh, I ended up making out of it. So, I mean, we're going to walk into this tent right now, even though this guy says he's going to kill me if I do it. Uh, and we're going to have a good old conversation. It's 100 plus degrees, plus the blacktop making it even hotter yeah, out that's here. that's fucking insane, dude. Being homeless in 110 degree weather. I would rather be homeless in, like, the freezing cold. What risks do people living out here have from a health perspective? Well, I mean, high risk. If you aren't hydrating basically every 10 to 15 minutes, you can dehydrate and die. And I'm pretty sure that's happening out here very regularly. I can't imagine how people can last even a couple hours out here. There's barely even even trees. Where's the shade? We're at the edge of the zone. We are, it already's gotten messy. We have people passed out, a lot of trash, tons of encampments to the right. As we approach the epicenter of the zone, we grabbed a few cold waters and hit the streets. It already feels a little weird. It struck your spidey senses just now. Just that we have this encampment on the corner with people as watch, you know, lookouts, you know, already eyeballing us, and I just yeah. think it would be smart. We sidestepped the sketchy looking block and rizzed our way into conversation with an elder who explained how dangerous it really was out here. Is it dangerous out here in the zone? Oh, yeah. Shooting. Shooting. People beat in the middle of the street. You said set people on fire? <gasps> people? Set yeah. people on fire? Police say the victim was a man. He was placed in trash bags, loaded into a grocery cart, and then thrown into the dumpster. The man was alive before a third person set fire to the trash in the dumpster. Now that we confirmed internal violence was common out here, I wanted to know how people survived in the heat, and I stumbled upon a guy who looked adapted to this environment. You survive in this heat out here. One way is to keep a good sweat going and just uh, maintain um, some kind of shade. We're all wrapped up. Like, looks like we're in the middle of like Middle Eastern desert with the attire you're wearing right here. Is everyone out here homeless? Is this a hot spot for drug use? It's a mix of everything. Middle I think, Eastern really. desert. I mean, dude, isn't the fucking, isn't Phoenix, Arizona almost as hot as the, the Middle East? Like, what is the temperature in the Middle East right now? Temperature in the Middle East. Oh, it's giving it to me in Celsius. Mm. Mm. I'm from the United States. I don't know how to and I don't know how to fucking convert that. Oh, there's a little sliding scale here. 
In the United Arab Emirates right now, it's like 110. Yeah. They're around the same. Just for the 100 of suicide prevention, this is for charity. Thank you for the fucking donut, dude. Anonymous for the 15. Uh, and MX Gibby for the three. If you're feeling out of it, please seek help. Suicide is never the answer. Anonymous for the one. Read the donos you skipped over before Darman. Some are important. Uh, the donos I read before Darman. Uh, I don't know if I could scroll all the way back down to that. Uh, and I missed like three donos. I, I honestly read like all of them. I read every dono. I just didn't read every message from the dono. I, I can't scroll down that far. Oh, wait, well, let me. I, like, I don't, I don't know which ones I didn't read. We've gotten like 400 separate donos. Uh, Gremlin for the five. If you're somebody that sent a dono and I didn't read it, let my mods know what you said and I'll read it. Gremlin for the five. Tartar for the one. Money's kind of tight right now. Sorry if the dono's really small. You're good, dude. Andrew for the 355 uh, and Tram for the sub. All right. Is there fentanyl out here? Uh, supposedly, yes. What, what do you think the people out here, including yourself, need the most in the zone? I don't, I don't really associate so much, so I really can't say or speak for them. You have to go ask them yourself. He was right. So, we descended deep into the zone and met a woman by the name of Baby. So, Baby, how long have you been here in the zone? Mm, about four years. How has your experience been thus far? Hot. How do you deal with the heat out here? Mmm, stay wet most of the time. Putting water over your head? Water everywhere, yeah. Okay. So it's going to be 110 plus out here today. What do you do when it gets that hot? Put the towel in the, the ice chest and just throw it over me or something like that. Okay. What's the thing people need the most out here, do you think? Water. Water. Ice. How are you dealing with the heat out here? You look hot, man. Shh. Barely, like... You got this cooler right here. That's pretty nice. Yeah, it's a little investment. What do you think people need out here the most? Water. Shelter. Yeah. Fans. Fans. Yeah, that and them not, like, uh, helping to find housing for people that are homeless, you know, so... Do you see a lot of people die out here? Yo, what are, even if you do have housing, I'm assuming the AC bill and everything, and, fu like, the electricity bill at a, in a fucking Phoenix, Arizona apartment is probably insane. Yeah. You just drop dead from heat stroke or? A heat stroke. Every day the ambulance is down here, fire departments down here. Okay. It seemed like the deadly heat and lack of water was legitimately killing the people out here. You see people die out here every day? Come on. You see people in the shelters die every day. Times are so difficult. Yeah. It's so rough that they actually physically die. And we're going to go in there a little bit deeper and talk to some people. In the well, tent. when you do, yeah. I wish you well. Kevin, a few ladies are up here. Might be approachable. Yeah, let's go say hi to him. See how charismatic you are with women? I'm sure you have a skill set that I cannot even comprehend. No, you cannot comprehend. Uh, you, can't co you cannot comprehend the riz that I have uh, for women, Tyler. Uh, you are never going to be able to reach the level of uh, Rizzlington that I am comparable to you. Uh, let's just say that I kind of have a way with the ladies as well as the men. Um... You know, I I'm I just I'm just kind of a warm heart, right? I'm somebody that somebody that anybody can talk to. Okay. Moments before getting shanked. All right, well, we just want to learn more and kind of find out where the services are and not raise awareness. I mean, services are nowhere. As Kevin's Riz had failed us, the guy next door wanted to talk. As we approached this tent, the infuriated ladies began menacingly walking behind us with baseball bats in hand. She got a baseball what? bat. What? She got a baseball bat. I don't, maybe um, she ready to go play ball, you know? <laughs> you think so out here in this heat? Yeah, with somebody's head, you know what I'm saying? Oh, shit. You got any advice for us out here? Because it looks like we're attracting some looks. Baseball back carrying ladies out here. <laughs> like, so now if you're not getting burned out here alive, the sun itself seems like it'll do it to you. How do you survive in the heat like this? <laughs> I'm a different kind of animal. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do to protect yourself out here? Whatever whatever I have to do, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm always strapped down, locked, and loaded. But, but this is Oh, shit. That's pretty bad. Out Boy. So this is a machete. That is a rusty machete. Imagine getting your fucking, imagine getting whacked with a rusty fucking, probably half dull machete. You're going to get a fucking disease and you're going to be gushing blood. Yeah. Yeah, this is a machete. Have you had to use it on someone? Um, I killed a dog with it. Feral dog? You know. Pitbull? With Pitbull. I, I yeah. knew it. No offense to Pitbulls, but... <laughs> They're always the ones that are ripping babies heads off. You have a lot of crime out here. But Where exactly was the, the reason pit bulls are aggressive is because, and correct me if I'm wrong, 
they were bred to be aggressive. Uh, pit bulls can be okay in public. It, you just have to raise the dog correctly, right? Uh, some dogs are bred to be nice, right? Like golden retrievers. Like if you ever see a mean golden retriever, the owner really fucked up, right? It's not the breed of dog. Pit bulls are naturally prone to be aggressive, but at the end of the day, it's still training that changes the dog, right? Uh, they're sweet animals if they're, they're trained correctly, right? They're only going to be that aggressive if the owner enables that, right? Jonah and game for the sub beast for the five. Don't commit suicide. Permanent solution to temporary problem. Casual for the one. As important as it is to help, always remember you're not responsible for other people's happiness. Don't put yourself at expense. Refer to them to somebody who can help. Exactly. Gabby Barr for the one. I don't have much to donate. I uh, wish to donate. I've been struggling with suicide uh, ideation for a long time, but thank you for, uh, thank thanks to you, my therapist, and my family have gotten uh, over it. Thanks for everything. Useful for the sub Cali for the one. All the money I got in my card. You're good. Uh, dude, I, you, I, I appreciate any dono. You don't have to explain like why you sent the specific amount that you sent. I will just thank you for the dono. Suicide Prevention Month. I already know two people that have took their lives this month. Wow. Just a boy. Thank you for the $100 dono. Uh, for, fuck, wait. Is that to me or suicide prevention? Oh, you said this is for me. I can't tell, though, because it says two. It says tipped. Normally, it would say dono. Regardless, thank you for the $100 dono. Just a hot boy. Uh, Mr. Totino's for the sub and 100 for the tiltify. Says this is for charity. Anonymous for the 15. Mason for the three. Where's Kevin when I need him? Somebody is mad at me when driving. Kevin is literally like, hey, man. The, can you point out where the man was burned? We kind of want to look at the location. Maybe go down just to send the her. right. Go to the right. Do we? Uh, this right? First corner. Be here, that's the trash Tyler's can. Like, do we want to go see that? Could be wrong, but we can ask these guys. So what's your name, sir? Jewel. He walked past the trash can when the guy was in it. Oh, so you saw it on fire? How did you end up here? I moved here from Florida uh, when I first got here, went on this huge drug binge. Okay. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Simon for the five. I'm 17. My mom passed away a couple of days after Christmas in 2022. Rip in the chat. I thought about committing, but I didn't want to because my grandma, uh, I didn't want to cause my grandma any more pain to stay strong for my younger sister. Just wanted to donate and say thank you for the funny content. Uh, well, I mean, I'm glad I could help, but I really, that, that does suck. I'm sorry to hear that. Ribo for the sub. I'm glad you're still here, though. Uh, and that you stuck with that shit uh, for your family. That's great, right? Uh, I mean, I, I'm hoping you're you're at least a little bit better now. But regardless, that still does suck. All right. Dude, I feel like my fucking phone case is, like, breaking my phone. Like, this shit is just not working. Hold up. All right. Tram for the sub, Ribo for the sub. Lock in. All the money was gone. Ended up at cast. What do people get caught up in? The post, the TikTok you posted today really helped me out. Thanks, man. How's that even doing? Literally, I posted that, and then I checked it like five minutes later and haven't checked it since. I was doing well. And out here. The ratchetness, the seediness. <laughs> um, she... When you are in an area yeah. that you're not used to, and it has an element of fun to it, even if it's a negative type of fun, it's going to pull you in. What drugs in particular? Uh, meth and blues are the biggest right now. When's the last time you've used blues or meth out here? What are blues? Oh. Street name for oxycodone, which is a prescription drug used to relieve moderate and severe pain. I did math about three hours ago. Okay. Have you adapted to the heat or is it still intolerable? It does. Meth three hours ago. How long does meth last? Hold up. Oh, like, is he still high on meth right now? Oh, you watch the Eagles play? What is the Eagles game tonight? Romper for the sub. 425? Yeah, no. 
Dude, I'm gonna be streaming for like another fucking hour and a half, two hours. This takes some getting used to, okay. and it makes doing the drugs that much more dangerous. Have you seen people get heat stroke or pass out while on drugs and just not even be aware of how hot it is? Yes. What have you seen? The blues make you nod off, regardless of what temperature it is. Sure. This dude looks like he's about to pass out. Well, just sweat yeah, right? is pouring down me. He it looks, looks like bad, a... doesn't he? Well, it's just like I have sweat in my eyes and I can barely see. You look see. like you're going to have like, heat stroke right now, actually. No, it's good. I'm not even kidding you. It's really hot. So, sir, how did you end up out here? Ah, oh, man, I just came from Vegas, man, thinking I had a better opportunity out there. What happened once you got here? Ah, oh, man, I kind of got uh, strung out on drugs, man, and uh, really, you know, took a wrong turn. What came your way, fentanyl? Uh, no, meth. Meth? Okay. Yeah, never experienced it in my life because I was a cokehead, and then and then it seemed like, you know, when I went broke, uh, all, all I got for was meth. That's how it happened for me. I was a wow. recreational user of coke. I use it once a week, you know, and then it never affected me like that. Johnson, how long have you been out here? I've been out there for 30 something years. Before they took me to prison, I had got caught with meth. Well, that's like, what's the, that's the difference between these types of drugs. It's like, there are people that do coke and you would never know that they're a cokehead, right? Like you, I mean, not everybody, right? But a lot of you guys probably know someone that's like an adult that does coke and you don't even know that they do coke right like th because they can still be functioning with it they're still a coke addict they're so addicted to it but like they're not on it in the uh, the effect where like it's making them homeless it's just a really expensive thing but like when somebody's doing meth or heroin and shit like that like you'll rarely see somebody that's like capable of even functioning right because it's it, it's even more addicting number one and uh it while you're on the drug, you can't even really do anything. Uh, Z, uh, Z Swaski for the fucking 10. We reached the goal again. Do you think we could make it to 3K? Amazing parade uh, parade for the sub. Vicky for the three. Romper for the sub. Should I up the goal again, chat? I'll up it one more time. I'm going to get 3K. I could perceivably see us hitting 3K. Did I up it? I did. All right. Parade for the sub. I'll go call you now. You interested in sharing your experience out here? Uh, just a little hot. A little hot? How do you deal with the heat? I'm just drinking a lot of water. Where do you get the water from out here, though? From all the generous volunteers. Okay. Mid-interview, my spidey senses went off, revealing this guy swinging a metal beat stick behind my back, deciding whether or not he wanted to hit- Your spidey senses are tingling? When you literally hear a guy right behind you, dude, it, it wasn't your spidey senses, Tyler. You saw the guy fucking standing behind you contemplating whether or not to whack you with a bat. Hit me. What's up? I like 16 heat strokes, bro. Like. This guy then accused me of handing out salt to dry and kill people living on the streets. You, you sent her out there. Wait, I sent her? Or you think I sent Oh, uh, you didn't send her? No. You wait for Santiago? No. <clears throat> Tell me about the salt. What do you mean by the salt? Someone's... You, you know, like, we've been at war, like... Did you see this morning, right? No. Did you save the world? All right, good. All right, I'm done. Okay, good talk. Right, hey, good job for saving America, bro. Just put out more salt, bro. Hey, bro, I, like, I like your outfit, bro. Like, gay pride, bro. <laughs> Damn. Are you not gay? <laughs> what is the black in... How does the black indicate gay? I'm African American. What does that have to do with anything? I'm a citizen. And? What? Yeah. Okay. This right here, like, this, you know me, right? Yeah. Oh, right, man. Yeah, no, feel this. this, this. <laughs> hey, what are you doing, bro? What's the man talking here? Talk about it. He's a man. I think he wants to learn. Can, can he come over closer, please? I think he's oh, curious, no, too. You, you will care, though. <laughs> he said you will care. He said you will care. Well, I mean, it looks guard. like it because it's so it's sharp. The flute. The flute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. All right, good chat. Hey, bro, you're Latino. <laughs> 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 Oh hey, my you know god. I'm not Illuminati. Oh no no, I don't know about that. Hey, you don't see yeah, this guy's actually crazy. Like this guy's actually crazy. I'm a woman. Are you you in? After confusing him with logic, I used this as an opportunity to walk away and avoid getting my brain splattered by this guy's metal stick. Yeah, it was making me nervous as you were talking to another guy. He was like clenching. I don't really think they would have lost that fight, in all honesty. 2v1, 2v1 against this guy. I mean he's got the bat, yeah. But I feel like I feel like Kevin would fucking come in clutch, you know. I think I think Kevin doesn't talk about it. I think Kevin knows some sort of martial arts, you know. What do we think Kevin knows?
a little bit of jujitsu, right? I think that I think Kevin could put that man in a headlock in about fucking three seconds. I'm a woman. Uh, you, you in? After confusing him with logic, I use this as an opportunity to walk. What a taekwondo way and avoid getting my brain splattered by this guy's metal stick. Yeah, it was making me nervous as you were talking to other guy. He was like clenching it hard and was just kind of holding up, holding it up behind you. And I was a little nervous what he was gonna do. Yeah, your face is so damn red. Just to emphasize, someone not used to this heat, you're feeling yeah. it. As we made a minor retreat back to the center of the zone, I noticed people living in residential apartment complexes, completely fortified with iron walls and fences. Question wow. for you, sir. Do you happen to live here? Yeah. I'm planning on living. I mean, that would make me feel safer, though, in all honesty. Like, it, if you guys lived here, wouldn't you want this? Like, just like a straight-up enclosure? Rather than like, like, so it's like a wall and then your door. How long has it been like this? Really, it started probably in October of 19. So it started a couple blocks down and it just kept expanding. Is it dangerous living in such close proximity? Yeah, my car's been shot twice. Shot? Yeah, shot? I've, I've lost two windows and I've got a bullet hole on the side of it. You can see it. Okay. It still needs to be, it needs to be taken. All right. Thank you, sir. Have a good day. Man, imagine living in the middle of this. That's crazy. With the only resident I could find upset that this camp was so close to his home, I wanted to see how downtown Phoenix, only a few blocks away, was affected by the zone's presence. Do you see anybody right here? There's literally- I was gonna say it honestly seems like no one's- It's like middle of the day, and there's no traffic. And this isn't this in Phoenix, Arizona. It's like a big city. Like, why is there no one fucking here? It's like 2 p.m. Presence. Do you see anybody right here? There's literally nobody here. It's like around. a ghost town. No, I'm convinced the zone is spooking people away from... I don't think that's what it is. I think there's just nothing down there, and that's why people move there. Because there's probably no jobs down there. It literally looks like it's just office buildings, maybe. Not even. Just like random ass building. Actually visiting. Driving through this ghost town surrounding the zone, I spotted a small cooling station a few blocks away. How you doing? Could I see exactly what you guys hand out? Oh yeah, you can take it. Okay, cool. Cooling pod. Oh yeah, it feels good in here. So you're allowed to just come in here and chill for a minute? Interesting. Are, are these being handed out all day or is it just yeah. given out? Dasani! Yo, what the fuck? Yo, I feel like these companies are trying to kill people. It, like, isn't Dasani the saltiest water that you can buy? Like, it's nice that they're doing that, but I'm like, it, I feel like salty makes you more, or not salty. I mean, that's what it is. salty. That shit makes you thirsty as fuck. I could chug a Dasani water, and I'll be more thirsty after drinking it than before I fucking drank that shit. There's sodium in it. Grimau and Milky for the sub. It's not a lot, but like, how much sodium's in Dasani? Uh, it says zero. I don't believe that. I remember reading and I remember reading the back of a Dasani bottle and that bitch said like 60 milligrams of sodium or some shit. It says zero. False marketing. False advertising. 29 grams of sodium. 1% of your daily value. Okay, so it's not that much. But I feel like that shit tastes salty as fuck to me. I don't know why. Steven and Milky for the sub. Also, the only place you ever drink Tasani water is at an airport. Am I wrong? Or like a baseball game or some shit. Like, I'm never, I've never met anybody that has Dasani water at their house. Hours. Um, not 24-7. Okay. We only do it within the hours of 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. because that's when we're open. Got it. How many people would you say you see on a daily basis? Joe Duff drinks water out of a well. Bitch, I'll drink water right out of a faucet. Unfazed. I'll drink that fucking city. I'll drink that brainwashed city water. I'll drink, <laughs> I'll drink that city water that people say will make you liberal. I drink that shit. You know, the fucking shit they're putting in that water, man. That... That mind control shit they're putting in the fucking pipes. You know, Joe Biden actually made that shit. You know, the, the more you drink the fucking city water, the more liberal you become. Base is coming here. The, the softer your hands get, too. You ever notice you wash your hands with that city water? It just takes that dirt right off. Grab water and this location the doesn't really seem too many people just because like the camp isn't really around today we're up to i think about eight six to eight visitors that they said they had okay. i just got here at two o'clock so we haven't really had anyone here just how yet. jones said the exact same thing yeah i know <laughs> i'm making fun of that 
The fact that somebody actually thinks like wa the city water is like mind control juice. Why is it so far away from where the people currently are at? Because the city has actually forced everyone out. Got it. Serving only eight people a day, nowhere near the main homeless camp. I was confused. Eight people a day and this is his full time job? Why this place even existed. And then boom. A guy came to cool down. This dude just pulled up and he's going to use the pod to cool down like now. This was a great idea in theory and it felt really nice inside. But why wasn't it closer to where the actual... Like, what is this building? Like, is this abandoned? Does nobody fucking work here? People are located. We drove to the other side of the zone with countless people and not a cooling pod in sight to see how hot these tents got during peak heat. How long have you been out here? About a month now. Have you adapted your living situation to this heat out here? Not really. Okay. Stay hot, man. Yeah. I'm, I'm from the south, so I'm used to the humid. Sure. But, you know, being out here in this dry heat, man, is ridiculous. Would there be a way I could just feel how hot it is for a second? Just put, poke my head in? Go ahead. Get inside, brother. That's hot, man. This is a sauna in here, man. Doggo's got to get hot. And at night, dude? Ugh. Too, I imagine. Yeah, so we're right in the thick of things right now. This looks more like Skid Row. Street closed, abandoned housing, people who do not want to live here anymore because of this problem. It's so dense, you literally can't even get through it. I would run. move. I mean, I'm straight up. Like, would you guys stay here? If that was my house there and then and then the streets became this, I would fucking move. Like, I, that's not astonishing that people are, like, getting up and leaving their homes. What's the biggest thing you think you guys need out here? The need. Need. Yeah. Define, define the word need. Okay. Months back, I decided I'm living here permanently. While most lived in tents, some lived in fortresses. You have one of the most fortified fortresses of all time. I just want to say that. This is badass. How long did it take for you to build this? Days. Days? And amidst all this chaos, there was the occasional outsider trying to help in random ways like this guy advertising free rides on the side of his car. I came here from Dayton, Ohio. Okay. I got here in March. All right, I came here with my set 11-year-old twins, and we lived on the streets just like this okay. with no tent. Wow. Or Helping out people right now. So then we got an apartment and I immediately start giving back and that's just what it is. So how often do you give people a free ride out here? I, I try to come through it as much as I can. If I have a full tank of gas, I give the ride for free and it's just that uh, simple. Here's, Here's some, some gas, gas money. money. This is gas money. Okay, well thank you. All right. You. Hey, can you give me the info? Yeah. Well, there you go. Good stuff, man. And just to block down, there were two people handing out food and water to the homeless. You guys do this every weekend? Every Saturday. What drove you guys to come out here and do this act of goodwill? Uh, because the purpose of the organization, okay. Arizona Women of Substance, to feed the homeless, help to them, we bring clothing, and we bring stuff to help them. With food, water, free rides, and cooling pods, I asked these two people smoking meth if there were more permanent solutions to get them off the streets. How long have you been living in this tent? Um, I've been living here for about almost a year. It's after they moved everybody on 9th, I, I had no tent, no nothing. So you lost your tent? Yeah. Is meth like an upper? I, okay, I know it's not a pill, right? It's not like an upper or downer like that. But like, does meth, like, what does meth do? Like, I've watched Breaking Bad, right? <laughs> and that's how I know what meth, like, does, right? Like, I'm assuming it makes you hyper, but, but like, I don't, but, like, in when you watch the Breaking Bad show, you know when Tuco snorts the meth, and he goes, whoa, and then he gets, like, hyper? Anytime, wait, no. Yeah. He's, he does the meth, and then he gets hyper, and he goes, tight, tight. Yeah, and he, he fucking likes that shit, right? But then when I see these videos with Tyler and these people are doing meth, they look, like, tired. Does meth make you tired? Google Google said meth. <laughs> Google showed some guy that said he gets tired and now he takes meth for his tiredness. I feel like that's not smart. Uh, Parad, Grem, uh, Milky, and Steven from Sub the Werewolf for the 10. Uh, love your content, all you do for the community. Keep up the great work and all you do for charity streams. What is your next philosophy stream? I don't know. Can you react to the uh, the meaning of life Muslim spoken word, at least on the philosophy day? Can you set it in the video suggestion tab? It's after for the sub, the oddity for the three. Struggle with thoughts to end tendencies uh, and trying to fight it by yourself is really difficult. I honestly suggest you out, uh, ask for outside help. Exactly. Uh, and I don't know my next philosophy day. Probably in like two weeks. Okay, week and and half, how maybe. long have you been without the tent? Like just a couple days. Okay. Two or three days at least. Like Where do you time. sleep? Right now, anywhere. Okay. Once Viewfinder, I'm pretty sure I deleted that game. The street? Anywhere 
It was fun, but I mean, eh. If I'm gonna do a philosophy stream, I might as well just do philosophy, not play viewfinder while I do philosophy. Alright, fine. It's like camping. In yeah. the desert? Yeah. Yeah. You know, but just with... No, the only thing you don't have is the facilities, but they got those inside. Okay. Does this protect from the sun? Does it keep you yeah. cool? Yeah, for okay. the tarp. The so do they have any resources for you guys to be able to like, shower and bathe out here? Or yeah. No. Yeah? Yeah, inside the LDRC. Okay. So we went to the alleged service center to see what they actually provided and stumbled upon an old friend. Hey, how are you doing? Oh, how you doing, man? Well, you we had to cool down our stuff a little bit. Cool yeah. Yeah. Like, dude, like, I live in Africa, nigga. Like, the hottest part next to Egypt. That's facts. Like, a little sweat, nigga. I'm a water sign. Are you gonna go in here right now? For what? I don't know. We're gonna Great check it out. Feet. Can anyone walk through? Um, you can't get access straight up. You have okay. to get a campus ID. Okay. No. no. Not record on this campus. Yeah. Really? Okay, so this is not public. And it's private property. Okay, good to know. Thank you guys. Appreciate that. Unable to get a look inside whatever this organization did exactly, I walked back to our parked rental car only to see two cops cons- Wait, I just realized that guy said he lives in Africa. Or did he say lived? I was going to say, bitch, you're in Arizona. ...that it might get stolen. When I asked them about the zone, they said this. The city's trying to put in new shelters. They yeah. purchased... He lives. He said lives? Bro, he lives in Arizona. Isn't he one of the homeless guys? He's not just vacationing to Phoenix. Tells a lot of the people that are still staying out here, they're in the right area. <laughs> like that's the last place. Imagine you live in Africa and you're like, let's take a vacation to the United States. Let's go to Arizona. Let's go to let's go to the closest place that's hot as fuck. Let's uh, let's not go to like California or like Florida or, or some shit. Let's go to fucking Phoenix, right? In in 115 degrees. Yeah, if they wanted to get some. We saw the cooling stations. Yeah, there's unlimited there's a, water and, and AC. So there is shelter. Yeah. Don't think Africa's a country. I don't think Africa's a country. I'm saying if you're from Africa, the majority of African countries are hot. Especially if he's using the reasoning as, I'm used to the heat, I'm from Africa. He's probably saying he's from, like, the Saharan-esque areas. Not, like, South Africa or some shit. Africa's a continent. I know. Like, are people, uh, like... Hello? Anybody there? I literally said that Africa was a continent. What the fuck are you saying? A lot of resources. At the shelter, Yeah. there's something called the, the Garcia Welcome Center. Okay. Where they can get an ID. Blood, blood thinks Africa's a country. For the shelter. We heard about this. They can get their mail. They can get a state ID. They can... Go do your homework. Please. Where everything, the basics that they need to identify themselves they can get jobs so they can blood thinks africa's a country i already know he has like seven essays due the next day and he's fucking sitting in my stream blood thinks africa's a fucking country take advantage of programs there's a medical clinic there's a dental clinic there's uh, something called cbi for behavioral health and addiction Let's see yeah, it's a service it's, heavy it's, area well it's designed to be a one-stop shop but uh, when you combine behavioral and mental health issues yeah uh, along with drugs and, and substance abuse you get a group of people who feel outcast and who choose to stay here because they, they're accepted. We have eight officers that are spread over seven days over two shifts. It's not a lot. You're looking at it. It's a, yeah. Funding's not the issue. It's yeah. recruiting. People don't want to be cops anymore. And, and part of the other problem, too, is now you're looking at trying to recruit more officers from an ever-shrinking pool of people who are eligible and willing. It's, it's a mess. All right. I say we go to the next video because now it's kind of getting repetitive, but that one's a good one. Entertaining video. We're on to the next. Actually, we'll watch... I want to watch the infamous poop story first. Badass for the sub. Uh, Tonball for the sub. Jay for the sub. 69 for the subs. After for the fucking sub. The oddity for the three. Uh, already read that. And Zepter for the 15. Glad you're doing this. Love the streams. Keep up the good work. Thank you. The infamous poop plane. Well, I, I guess I can't describe it. It was just... It was just constant. Details about what forced a Delta Airlines flight. Nobody can tell it any worse than what it was. From Atlanta, Barcelona, the turnaround Friday night mid-flight. The Delta Airlines 194 flight. What fucking happened? 
it was that bad. Today is a very serious video. We're going to be talking about one of the most dangerous, one of the most horrifying flights to ever go up in the sky. Not that one. <laughs> Do we know the name of the flight? Yeah, there it is. We're of course talking about Delta Airlines flight DL-194, codenamed the Poopy Pigeon. <laughs> the Poopy Pigeon. <laughs> this, in recent memory, is one of the most disturbing, one of the most haunting stories to grace us on the internet yet. And let me tell you something, it takes a lot for a, an airplane halfway through its travel to be like there, there's we cannot go any farther we have to turn around and come back and that is unfortunately what happened well, like, to dude, i wanted shit start flowing out of the fucking toilet the airline flight d uh d dl194 the poopy pigeon is now an infamous also poopy pigeon that's that's mine Tr trademark trademark mine what happened on poopy pigeon what happened on dl194 definitely not as fun as saying poopy pigeon was a woman Did you just my poor man wolf well, i'll tell you the story calm down shot diarrhea all over the plane what and when i say all over the plane it's not just your seat where someone's like oh no it all over the plane from front to fucking back. I mean, unbelievable. How do you shoot diarrhea all over the plane? What were they running around with their pants down? So let me go in depth about what happened. I saw this on TikTok. I've never heard of this. On this aircraft that had to turn around and re-land back at its starting destination. <laughs> Unless they were shitting themselves on the plane and like walking around. Today's video is sponsored by Bad Dragon. I gotta skip this. I gotta skip this. I love you, Papa Meat, but I gotta skip this, bro. Top of their list, and they have such an amazing floor so they die, you know. And back to the video. On this aircraft that had to turn around and re-land back at its starting destination. <laughs> this was la- Bro, he's acting like this is a story from like four years ago. Or like two years ago. This is this is last week. This happened last week. Let me tell you of the story of the flight that had to turn around. Like this shit was like in 2021 or some shit. Or like the Titanic. Dude, Greg Heffley, thank you for the fucking 10 gifteds. Greg Heffley, 627, thank you for the fucking 10 gifted subs. Nick for the three. Can't give much. Uh, you're good, dude. Thank you for the fucking donut. Rusty for the sub. Bad Ash for the sub. And Greg Heffley, thank you for the time gifted subs. <gasps> oh, my God. Friday, September 1st. Not so long ago. It was a warm, humid... Dude, I'm pretty sure he uploaded this a day ago, too. He probably filmed this shit like three days after it happened. Atlanta Day. Partly cloudy throughout, in but Atlanta. nothing adverse outside of a slightly darker sky. Not an uncommon sight for Georgians around this time of year. For most passengers, we start at the Atlanta Hartsfield Jackson International Airport. ATL, baby. Right? You can have whatever you like. That's, uh, what's it? Who's that guy's name? There's a movie, ATL. What the fuck? The guy was in it. Jackson, me, Patron, on ice. We can have whatever you like. And the Grammy goes to. That's, that's mine. <laughs> or here, actually, I'm just going to say. Oh, wait, I remember what it was. Beep, lo, lo, lo. There you go. Do me justice there, please. For most passengers arriving at Atlanta's busiest airport, this was just another normal day for air travel, especially for those slated to board Delta Airlines flight DL-194. Where's it going? Where's it going? Oh, it landed. Yo, that's actually, that's actually funny as shit. Landed over six days ago. Left gate E26, Atlanta, Georgia. Landed in Atlanta, Georgia. Two hours later? What the fuck? No way they turned around, bro. They had to almost be at the fucking at the fucking area. They were in the they were in the air for two hours. Nine four. A common flight route that takes place most evenings. Oh, they were gonna go. They were gonna go across country. Sporting passengers from Atlanta to Barcelona. <laughs> Is that how you say it? It's procedure. Barcelona, Barcelona. Isn't that how they say it? I know in most Spanish countries a C is just a C, right? But in Bar, it's Barcelona, Barcelona. Like the C is a TH, right? Yeah, C, yeah. I remember, dude, I remember that from my Spanish class. I remember that from my Spanish class, Spanish three. If you're, if you're ever in Barcelona though, don't say Barcelona, Barcelona, Barcelona. 
Spanish countries? Yeah, a country that speaks mainly Spanish. Spain. In Barcelona, Spain. If you're in Barcelona they or in Spain, they generally have a different accent than people in, like, Mexico or fucking Costa Rica or fucking any of that shit, right? Uh, Greg, thank you for the uh, 2,000 biddies. Says, I love you, Poppy. I appreciate that. For flight DL-194 to depart. Some you took Spanish 3? Yeah. In my high school, three years of language was required. I'm around 640 most nights. However, on this night, there were some pretty extensive delays for those weary travelers that extended their stay in Atlanta for one hour and 49 minutes. Just enough time for a concoction to brew. Already disgruntled, these poor aerial, com aerial commuters were... Oh, dude, I'm sorry. We're oblivious to the events that would take place and change their lives forever. Fucking lightning. <laughs> but let's go down even more specific. What was the exact breakdown of this horrible event? Every time code used here is EDT or Eastern Daylight Time. The event went as followed. 8.20 p.m. Passengers at Atlanta's Hartsfield Jackson International Airport board... At 8.20 p.m. Passengers board the flight. At 8.45, it takes off. At 8.50, somebody gets up to use the bathroom, but they don't make it. <laughs> they don't make it, do they? <laughs> they, fucking, they shit all over the walls! Dookie, thank you for the fucking $100. Go on tour. What do you mean on tour? Like I'm a music artist? I'm a fucking streamer. Go on tour. And do what? <laughs> Sing Tetris for the two. Board flight DL-194 in preparation for their eight-hour and 38-minute trip to Barcelona. Oh, my God. An eight-hour flight. 848. I understand why they turn around. What they turned around now, okay? I mean, we don't know how bad this is going to get, right? But I was assuming when he was like, oh, they had to turn around. It was so bad. I was like, dude, a three-hour flight. Like, I deal with the poop on the walls, right? Just get me... Get me to the destination. If somebody shit on... How, how about this? I'm going to pan out a scenario, chat. How long of a flight would it have to be to where an hour into the flight, somebody starts shitting all over the walls and you say turning around would be better than just continue going? Four hours. If an hour into a four-hour flight, somebody shit all over the walls, I might honestly say just keep it going. I honestly might just say, keep it going. Five hours, I'd say, turn around, right? Four hours, I'm going to say, yep, I, at this point, right, we've already been delayed two hours. What's a little shit going to do? Give me a face mask. I'll put it over my nose. Then I won't smell it. Greg for the fucking uh, thousand biddies. And Dookie is better. Thank you for the hundred again. Somebody on that flight was going to see a dying relative, but then that shit happens. Yeah, that would, that would actually be fucking shit. 8 p.m. After lengthy delays, Delta Airlines. It would be shit. Airlines flight DL-194 departs from Atlanta at 8.48 p.m., beginning its journey up through the eastern United States and over the Atlantic Ocean. 9.10 p.m., a passenger sitting in row 17B hears an old woman say, Miss, my stomach, do you have any times that my stomach hurts? 9.26 p.m., passengers oh, of the God. Airbus A350 oh, begin Jesus experiencing Christ. something unsettling. Oh, God. Alongside a frantic flight crew, many could smell a faint stench. A stench that wouldn't stay faint. From if I was sitting next to that motherfucker, oh my god, I would get so mad, bro. I'd be like, get up and go use the bathroom right now. Like if I no, I'm I'm I that would void all social awkwardness. If an old lady shit herself next to me, I would say, get up, please, please get up and go use the bathroom. You reek of shit. You reek of shit. Right? Like I'm not sitting on that. I I would I would stand in the back of the plane. Kevin for the sub. Much longer. Why didn't Nine. they go to the toilet? I mean, if they're old, they might have just shit themselves. But, like, them not getting up after is just insane. 30 p.m. Passengers become increasingly aware of a medical incident happening within the cabin. A biohazardous threat, as was described by the crew. 9.34 p.m. Panic ensues. Or maybe it didn't. We're not really sure because there's... Panic ensues. Not much information about what's happening at this point. However... Is this actually... We do know that, according to one passenger, people were crawling over their seats to get away from it. 9.36 p.m. The pods... Oh. I think that the old person shit themselves, and then it started, like, 
You know what I mean? Like, like go, like dripping through the seats and shit, right? Like you had, a, like imagine a really wet diarrhea, and it just starts like kind of creeping through, like through the seats and stuff. Let's begin to change course. Alerting air traffic control that there has been a biohazard incident on board. Yeah, it's just a, a biohazard issue. I, you know, we've had a passenger who had diarrhea all the way through the airplane. A messy tra oh my God, diarrhea! A messy trail of diarrhea left by a struggle, a struggling passenger. Oh my God! One could argue this was a severe understatement, though, as many accounts state that the explosive diarrhea had been smeared along the entirety of one of the craft's main aisles. What? How much shit? Yo, am I wrong in saying you would know you had the stomach issue before you got on that flight, right? Like, if an hour into the ride, she's like, "I'm gonna shit myself," like you would feel like shit before you got on, and the amount of poop they would have had to have. Lunar for the three. Finally go on break and quit slightly. This is what we're watching. Trail of diarrhea left by a struggling passenger. This was a severe understatement. As many accounts state that explosive diarrhea had oh. been smeared along the entirety of one of the craft's main aisles. 9.38 p.m. The flight crew is attempting to mop up the mess with paper towels and even scented wipes. One passenger notes that this just makes it smell like vanilla Stop shit. Smearing my it smells like vanilla shit. Know, I think it smells kind of good. 9.45 p.m. What do they do with the passenger? Like, I imagine being, oh my God, I kind of feel bad, right? Imagine being that person that's just like compulsively shitting your pants. Gremlin for the sub, just poop everywhere. Like, where do they put you? I would lock them in the bathroom. If I was a flight attendant, I would say sit in the bathroom for the rest of the flight, shit your brains out, and I'll call you when the flight is fucking done. It's an eight-hour flight, though! Oh my God. Oh my God. Okay. Yeah. No, I would turn around. I would want to turn around. Okay. I understand now. Like imagine having to smell poop for seven hours. Joe for the three. Uh, my sister fucked with me when I was eight years old. Uh, not normal sibling shit like bitches crazy. Now I'm grown. Uh, I've been in fights and shit for reference. So she's nice to me. And now I want to beat her ass so bad. She's never forgets. With peace and love, of course. The next time she tries some shit, uh, but my friends say that would make me crazy. I don't give a fuck. How do we feel? Uh, you fist fighting your sister would be by far the dumbest thing you could ever do. Uh, you can hate your sister and that's fine and you can despise her for like what she did or whatever, but deciding to fist fight your sister the next time she pisses you off, I think is a terrible idea. Low key for the $20 dono. Him. The diarrhea cleanup operation is overwhelming the you effort. You would get used to the smell. You kind of would. It's of the flight. But people would probably start vomiting. Crew. So they employ a runner to keep bringing them paper towels as they frantically wipe. Passengers use what they can to hide their nostrils from the scent. Many begin to realize they may not make it back. I would think it's actually kind of funny, though. No lie. Like, imagine being on that plane. Unless you had to be in Barcelona. Like, imagine being on that plane and being like, oh, my God. A, a passenger is explosively shitting everywhere. Like, as long as you're not... If I was, like, six aisles away from the person, I would be fine with it, right? I think I would think it would be funny, right? But, like, if I was within, like, a 10-foot radius of the person, I would be pretty upset. A mixed fact for the sub. If I was sitting next to them, it'd be brutal. Home alive. I'd stand up immediately. 9.52 p.m. The pilots finished redirecting the aircraft towards the diverted path back to Hatsfield-Jackson International Airport. Dude, AKA I need more lore on this. This video is almost over. I need to know what, ha like, who, who was this person? What happened? Hey, Atlanta. 10 p.m. There's nothing at this time to report, but we imagine it's torture for those on board. If we had to guess, it probably sounded something like this. How was she shitting solid poop on the floor, though? Get the fuck up, you're the hitter! Oh, God, I think more's gonna come Wow. 10.40 p.m. 
Delta Flight DL-194, now codenamed Poopy Pigeon, finally makes it back to Atlanta. Arriving at the gate after seven minute taxi where the passengers are, at long last, able to disembark with haste. As the passengers continued to deplane, one individual was able to capture this disturbing footage of the bo I feel like I should scan this. Oh, it looks like there's no disturbing footage. Biohazard aftermath. Two fifty seven. They put the person in a trash bag. Of the biohazard aftermath. Am I right? That's a person, right? <laughs> they put the person in a trash bag. Two fifty seven AM. After spending another five hours at Hatsfield Jackson, the poor souls of Delta Flight DL-194 finally depart- I'd make him sit in a trash bag. I mean, that would fix the problem. Atlanta once more. Fortunately for all the travelers involved, the story ends here. They'd been transferred to another flight that was able to successfully complete its trip to Barcelona. <laughs> Yes, that was the tragic tale so far of a poopy disaster. And you saw how fucking gross it was. But for a lot of people, the story doesn't end there. So apparently, whenever they landed, the ground crew spent hours ripping out all of- Ripping out the carpet? The diarrhea embedded carpet off the plane. People don't get paid enough for this guy. <laughs> yeah. Bro, imagine you're already having a shitty day. And you're, you're one of the ground crews, and they're like, all right, get on the plane. <laughs> oh, what's the problem? You step on. Oh, my God. There's just shit everywhere. Kind of service. It's, ugh, oh, my God. I cannot imagine being on my hands and knees doing that. My Honestly, my cap's out to all the janitors out there who have had to probably pick up shit at least once or twice. I think that if Delta, if I was, if I was fucking Tim Delta, if I was the CEO of this company, I would sue that old woman. I don't care how old you are. I'd be like, bring me her fucking head, dude. Are you kidding me? There were this plane. If I was the, if I was the person that ran, like, do you think the passengers got compensated? Like, I would be mad. I would be mad at the person, but I would also be like, bro, like, this shit just deflayed, delayed my, like, whole flight area by, like, six, seven hours, right? Like, I would want to get some sort of, like, free flight back or some shit, right? Evan for the sub, McFack for the sub, especially for how expensive the tickets probably are. Is done. It's like buying a house you know someone died in. When are you doing a Subnautica stream uh, tomorrow? You're just kind of like, okay, well, am I really going to live here? Fuck that. They're probably going to have to scrap the plane now. I thought this was an intriguing story because from what we've seen in the video, just such an unbelievable amount of diarrhea, and I can't even imagine what some of the souls on this plane were even going. Oh, wait, hold on a second. What is that? Flobble, lobble, lobble. I see. Lobble. So next time that you're deciding to fly out into the world, maybe you'll go to Atlanta. Hell, maybe you'll go. I mean, I've been to Atlanta airport a bunch of times. I've never had a poop incident on the plane. I feel like that's just a very rare thing. All right, next video. Uh, also, what are we at? We're at $2,630. Damn, Evan for the sub. Uh, all right. The scammer who sold the Eiffel Tower twice or... Actually, we'll do this one again. We'll do another shorty and then we'll do a long one. He stole $40 million and got caught. We'll watch this one first. Most people know that I get threatened a lot on this channel. People don't like it when you expose them. I suggest you use the money you got from pumping your Patreon to hire a good lawyer. You're gonna need it. So scammers saying that they're gonna go after me is something that I've long been desensitized to. Poppyzilla. Nobody knows anything about his family because they don't have the resources I have. But what we don't talk about a lot is that the opposite is also true. When victims of scams learn what's been done to them, the scammer very often becomes the target of a lot of personal threats. And honestly, most of them seem to take the same approach I do. You unfortunately have to ignore it. Because 99% of the time, internet threats are just that. Threats, which never go beyond the screen. But the Greg Heffley for the five gifts. Let's take it for the five gifts, Greg Heffley. This video is a reminder that every now and then, someone will take it all the way. We're talking today about Aiden Platersky, a scammer who taunted his victims with flashy cars and took their money until it was too late. And he was kidnapped, beaten, and ransomed for $3 million, leading up to this video, which I will warn you, may- Uh, are we allowed to watch this on stream? Yeah, probably.
be disturbing. Are we really allowed to watch this on stream? It's just him beating up. If anything that happened, it's my fault. I'm not going to put the blame on anybody else. I'm not going to try to put the blame on anybody else. I feel humiliated. I feel disgusted in my actions. I feel disgusted in what I did. After 2021, I feel like a lot of it was illegal. All these guys that are owed the money, I'm going to do what I can do to make it right. I'm going to call each and every one of you individually. What you just saw is a man who used to be called the Crypto King by Forbes.com who took in $40 million via a Ponzi scheme and never repaid his victims. In this video, he appears to be- $40 million? Apologizing for those actions, but now that he's free, he says he had no choice. Now, we first learned about the kidnapping back in March when Aiden Platursky's father claimed that Aiden was kidnapped. But many people, including myself, didn't really know what to make of these claims because no evidence existed besides an interview, which was filed in court. The father says that his son was taken. They basically held him for approximately three days, drove him around to various parts of Southern Ontario, beat him, tortured him, allowed him to make specific phone calls. Approximately two or three days later, he was released with the threat that he needed to come up with some money fast, specifically $3 million. But this week we found out that this kidnapping was very much real and that five men were arrested and charged with kidnapping. Wow. And we know that allegedly one of the kidnappers, Akil Haywood, actually knew Aiden quite well because he invested with him. Court records show Haywood lost more than $700,000 investing with Platursky. And in another twist, he was appointed as an inspector in Platursky's bankruptcy proceedings. That's right, one of the kidnappers was one of Platursky's victims who presumably watched him post- I mean, that's not really that surprising though, but 700 grand, dude? You yoink $700,000 from somebody? I feel like that's not like a surprise if they come after you. Long loss in four millimeter for the sub, just, uh, just for the five. Luxury cars and private jets to social media until he had had yeah, enough- Yeah, his money that he stole from the guy. Like, yeah, imagine you got yoinked 700 grand and then the guy that yoinked it from you was posting it like three new Lamborghinis he just bought. And as one of the bankruptcy inspectors, he had access to special kinds of information. You got scammed, so you kidnap and torture him. I'd be mad, but not enough for me to kidnap, uh, to get a kidnap charge, bro. I'm, I'm not saying I would kidnap him. I'm saying it's not a shocker that the person that did kidnap him was one of his clients. If that happened to me, I'd sue the fuck out of this Platursky guy, right? Tramp for the sub. For a Ponzi scheme. I would not kidnap him. I was saying that it's not a shocker that he was kidnapped. Or not kidnapped. I said it wasn't a shocker that he was kidnapped by somebody that was that. Oh, he says, I know you wouldn't. I'm just saying in general. Oh, yeah. About Platursky, possibly including the fact that some of the trustees thought Platursky was hiding assets. Do you believe? that he's hiding assets from you. I have reason to believe that he is still hiding assets, yes. So Haywood likely knew Platursky wasn't sharing everything and likely knew other people in the case were hiding information too, like Colin Murphy, one of the fundraisers for this Ponzi scheme. In January, he wiped his phone of all the data which he was asked for, uh, and he had a very bad explanation for why. Do you wipe your phone before, you know, knowing that they needed me? <sighs> what was on it. I keep uh, super sensitive stuff on there with my girlfriend. And um, it's funny because uh, this Norman Groot guy, he wants, uh, he's saying, oh, I'm hiding this information and blah, 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 blah. And he doesn't realize that I've been like, I've been keeping stuff uh, to give to somebody. I just didn't know if he was the right person. Ah, dang, I was about to give you guys all the evidence. I, I was trying to get it to you. And then I, I wiped my phone for no reason. Um, yeah. What? This this may be one of the most transparent ways to hide evidence, to wipe it before and go, I had a girlfriend, guys. Can't hold me accountable. And my point is, these he details suggest that Haywood might have believed. I'm assuming you didn't mean like Groot from like Guardians of the Galaxy. It's very for the 50 suicide prevention. I've been following your Twitch for about two years now. It brings me great joy knowing that this money is going to a great cause. This is for Cam. Thank you for the fucking 50. I appreciate that. Or Liz Ferry, not It's Ferry. That Platursky was hiding. Karen and Weenie Warrior for the sub. Assets that he could get that the court simply couldn't. Although it's worth saying, I'm definitely not defending what Haywood did, kidnapping him, because not only is it completely wrong, it quickly came out that 
Haywood isn't some misguided vigilante for justice or something. Uh, given what he did next, he seems about as horrible. Haywood is also charged with threatening an official from Grant Thornton, who's overseeing the proceedings for $2 million in cryptocurrency. The accounting firm said Haywood resigned as an inspector. Grant Thornton said, We've been cooperating with police and have maintained open lines of communication. We cannot comment any further as this is an active investigation. Wow, you heard that right. Not only did Haywood threaten the scammer, he threatened the bankruptcy lawyers in the case and wanted a bunch of money from them, which is really playing yeah, both threatening sides. somebody in a court case is just rough. It's in a creative way, I've got to say. And my point is, look, it's not like he was looking for the amount he was owed, which is allegedly $740,000. He was looking for millions of dollars as a payday. So no one in this situation is- But how would he get that money legally? Particularly great. And of course, since then, him and his co-conspirators now face kidnapping charges. But what I do find very confusing is that all of the crimes being passed around here like a game of hot potato, the one person not being criminally charged in this situation is Aiden Platursky himself, <laughs> the original scammer in this whole situation that started this all. He lied to all those people, said he was- Dude, he stole $40 million. Great uh, cryptocurrency Forex trader, allegedly stole tens of millions of dollars, spent most of it on cars, private jets, and expensive houses. And he's not being charged? Like, I'm so surprised by this. This case is very reminiscent of another story that we've just recently did with Ted Safranco, who promised these amazing Forex trades, but just ran a big Ponzi instead. And not only am I surprised by the size of these Ponzi schemes and that Platerski did something very similar. He invested only 2% of the 40 million he took in, but I'm also surprised by how blatant of a fraud this is. And incidentally, the similarities don't stop there with our last story. Remember, Ted Safranco claimed he was also attacked by would-be creditors. And so this pattern of crypto or Forex scammers isn't going away anytime soon, nor are the legions of upset. I, I don't want to say, I am I wrong in saying crypto is not really that big of a thing anymore? Like at least to what it was in like 2020 to like 2021. Crypto's been down, like from its, it's like 50% less than its peak for the last two years. Like crypto is not on the come up, right? It blew up and then it died, right? Like if you're comparing, like if a stock market did that, people would be like astonished. Like I know crypto's more like volatile and it goes up and down a lot, right? But I feel like the market for cryptocurrencies has just dropped. Just for the sub, Greg, for the sub, but he's amazing, uh, amazing for the three. I had an ex uh, cross country race yesterday while you were live, and I ran faster, so I wouldn't miss the stream. I ended up with a one minute PR. Dub. Just repo for the sub. Victims oh. who are pissed both that they got robbed and it's that. It's still profitable. I'm not saying crypto is not profitable. I'm saying that it is just nowhere near what it was. Just repo for the one. You've been one of the main reasons I started uh, streaming. You have been one of the favorite uh, celebs. Have a great stream. Thank you. Most of these people face little to any criminal charges. And so it's easy to see why they're frustrated. Although I have to say that I disagree with the method. Kidnapping someone who scammed you and ransoming them for money in some kind of scammer Uno reverse card is not a good idea. And getting an apology from them when they, you've beaten them up isn't doing anyone a service. So for ethical reasons human reasons and stay out of jail reasons maybe don't do this don't do it sounded a little half-hearted copy what's next please drink responsibly uh, i don't know what the fuck I constantly is get threats so i sympathize with the guy and new topics i've got just the thing that'll cheer you up okay well we're done with that video uh next one the scummiest family on youtube the royalty family, YouTube's scummiest household. They've amassed over 20 million subscribers by spoiling their kids. Isn't this the family where the kid got like a in real life battle bus or some shit and he made like a fucking music video with it? I remember, I feel like we watched that video. Royalty family battle bus. Yeah, they gave him a genuine battle bus. Surprising our son with a Fortnite battle bus in real life. What is all this? The what? battle bus. It's 
watch the battle bus from Fortnite. From Fortnite, the battle bus? It's blue. It's just like the battle bus with bean bags. Oh my god. Beyond comprehension and lying about everything from their family history to their house being broken into. This is all while concealing. Why does every family YouTube channel talk about their house getting broken into? Like every family YouTube channel. What was the other one that did that? It wasn't the Ace family. Was it the Ace family? There was one that like that like made that shit up for content. It might have been the Ace family. An extremely controversial past by instead public easy views, yeah. Sizing their modern stressful moments like not knowing which mansion to buy. The family of three created their channel by a humble YouTube title. We don't know we don't know which ten million dollar house to buy. Chat, you choose. Created their channel back in I don't know what million dollar mansion I wanna get. Huh. Let me leave this up to the YouTube comments. 2017, and with a name like the royalty family, it should come as no surprise that materialism and self-image is their entire identity. Their early videos featured them wearing shirts stating King, Queen, and Prince, titles which they also unironically used during the interview segments, while the dogs wore Louis Vuitton clothing and went by the names of- That dog is so expensive. One of my friends has a dog that's like that, and those things are like fucking four grand or some shit. Princessa and Gucci. They began to blow up with videos where the parents spent stupid amounts of money on their son, such as eight-year-old takes parents' credit card, no budget at mall, and parents can't say no for 24 hours, with these kinds of unrealistic videos understandably annoying parents. I walked in and watched a segment of a video from the royalty family channel, and it was- Yeah, and then it's like, and then the, the kids that are watching this are like, oh, why don't my parents do that? So terrible. First, everyone on it had an unwatchable personality, but the real disgust was how materialistic slash money obsessed the whole family is. I feel like the parents just pimp their annoying kid out for likes and views. <laughs> their annoying kid out. And it's amplified when the kid has zero talent or personality. Alright, the now they're just shitting on the kid, dude. He's like nine. Like <laughs> parents responded by simply stating I don't think it's his fault. That their son wasn't spoiled without providing Oh no, their son's spoiled as fuck. Flat out, their son spoiled. But I mean, like, it's not his fault. Any actual evidence. A lot of people talking about him being spoiled. He's a spoiled brat. He gets what he wants. Honestly, it's just ridiculous. Before making you bought him a battle bus. Chat, do any of you guys have a battle bus? Somebody redeem Dent. Ava for the sub. Oh, actually, I do have one the argument that they work hard so their son can have anything and we work our butts off to give things to our kids that we never had growing up which is literally the definition well, half of them working is spoiling their kid to then maintain a steady flow of income to further spoil their kids so they get more money it's like a loop mission of being uh for the 20 boy oy oying uh you're also for doing charity streams like this thanks for being a genuinely good streamer and always uh doing what you can to help thank you Spoiled. Despite the backlash, the royalty family gained a million subscribers after only one year on YouTube, although with a growth in income also came a growth in flexing, highlighted perfectly by Cody Ko. The kid is wearing Fendi shorts, Dior socks, and Yeezys. The dad is wearing a Gucci shirt, Gucci shorts, and a Gucci bag. It's like... I guess why it bothers me is because, like, the motive is very clear. It's like, we're not doing this for family. We're doing this for money. Our eight-year-old son finally got his Lamborghini. Yeah. It's not like, I feel like, are there any true family channels on YouTube? Yeah. You know the true family channel on YouTube? This guy. We love building stuff. The Outdoor Boys. That's a true fucking family channel. I'll watch them. It, it, him and his him and his son will stay in like the Alaskan wilderness for like a day. FGT, yeah, no, I maybe them too, but I this this family's definitely like real, right? Like they make money, like this is his job, yeah, it's like wilderness shit, but like they genuinely enjoy doing it. Like they'll just like stay, like they'll go camping and fishing, and just like actual genuine stuff. What is FGT? 
Oh yeah, they're they're, <laughs> they're a gen I mean, they do it for money, but it, I think they're genuinely having fun. At the end of the day, any family channel is doing it for money, but it's like, are they doing their video ideas for just for money, or do they actually also like doing the video ideas? Whereas the royalty family is kind of more, hey, we're going to do expensive shit, not because it's good for family, it's good for fucking clickbait, right? We bought a $50,000 mystery box, clickbait. Clickbait, 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 clickbait. Oh, this kid's way older now, what the fuck? Dude, they get mad views. Oh my god. 12 million views a video. 7 million views a video. Yo, what do you think they make per year, chat? Let's do a guess. Social Blade. Or on YouTube, at least. I'm gonna guess 2 mil. Eight mil. Upwards of eight mil. It's not guaranteed the higher number, by the way. That's why they have this. If you never understand how Social Blade works, it usually at, leans toward the two-thirds end of the higher number, right? So it's probably around six, right? Not eight. Uh, it's never the lower number. It's usually like the higher end of the, the other one because a lot of videos, for them, it's a, for them, it actually might be just straight up eight mil. For me, it's like the two-thirds end just because it's like, Half of my videos get demonetized. So you're not actually, like, making all the money on the views. Ava for the sub. His dream came true. While these they only post, like, once a fucking month. Videos are nothing more than clickbait garbage. It's probably not ideal to raise a kid in an unbounded materialistic environment. You can go to any stores you want. Farhan, all the stores that you want to go to, you can go to any store. Did I stutter? However, when these are clearly the values held by yeah, the- Yeah, that kid's probably going to have a massive quarter life crisis. Like straight up. Like just it, it, the reality in which he's growing up in is so fabricated. That, like, once he realizes, like, all, like, the philosophical shit about life and, like, what life really is and why he's really here, it's going to be a fucking shock, right? Like, a midlife crisis, but, like, when he's, like, 25. The parents, it's not like the kid has a choice. The parents likely justify the kid's involvement by thinking that it'll be set for life afterwards, although in doing so, they're raising him with an entitled, unlikable attitude. You said you don't want it? No, because two back seats. Oh, you don't want back seats. No. At the same time, however, you could make the argument- Yeah, I don't want the Lamborghini. It's got two back seats. That's not for me, right? That's like peasantry shit, right? What, what other two people do I need? that the family was simply making they could drive their own Lamborghini what the audience wanted to watch as the video spoiling the sun almost always gained the most views throwing a dart on a map and buying whatever it lands on 15 million views buying everything I touch blind look at V-Box has taken up half the goddamn map where it lands on 15 million views buying everything I touch blindfolded challenge 11 million views if you guess the price I'll buy it for you challenge 24 million views pulling these kinds of numbers they were missing that's what's crazy too is because they could spend on a 24 million view video that's like 20 minutes long if they're spending like six grand on this kid on stuff they're still probably profiting like a good fucking 100k 24 million views like a million view 20 minute video is probably like six G's only one thing to complete their terrible family channel arc, a mega mansion. Although in order to justify buying one, they'd first stage a video at their existing house, claiming that fans were showing up and pestering them. The premise of the video is that fans were outside of the house taking photos of the family. Come check this out. Like, look at this guy. This is like the fifth time I've seen him. Look at this. Can you believe this? After which Ali goes outside to confront them, resulting in quite possibly the fakest interaction on YouTube. Hey, bro. Why are you taking pictures of my house? I'm a fan. Hey, bro, why are you taking pictures? I'm a fan, man. You're 45. I'm a fucking fan, dude. I'm just a super fan. You're fucking in your 50s, man. This is a fucking family channel. Half of their fan base is fucking 10. In my house. I love the show, bro. You think that's cool, bro? I love the show. Rolling up in your Prius, you think you're cool? Dude, I'm 
the fair, bro. Yeah, so cool, you bro. I did a shout out. Very classy, very classy, hey, important, you guys. Diesel Patches dissected this little segment with some pretty funny commentary. Well, I'm a fan. Excuse me if I'm having a hard time believing that grown ass truck drivers are fans <laughs> of a family vlogging child's kid channel. After confronting the apparent fans, yeah, dude, their average, their average fan base is probably like eight. Because they make kid-friendly content on YouTube, dude. That's the youngest audience. Like, TikTok has a young audience base. But, like, YouTube family channels, dude, like, they'll have, like, literal children that are their fan bases. Ali supposedly called the police, after which an officer showed up who was also more than likely an actor, with the whole situation being so traumatizing that the family was apparently unable to sleep that night. Guys, let, let's try to forget about what happened. Nothing. We can get through this as a family. We're here for each other. We're strong. However, they when they got one pillow on their fucking bed. Upload another video the following day titled, We Have Bad News, Guess What? It became pretty obvious as to why they'd staged the confrontation. The family used the fake incident to claim that they now needed a bigger house. With that being said, we have exciting news for you guys. Yeah, we're gonna move out, guys. Of course, never missing a chance to reinforce their materialism. What kind of house do you want? I want a big and modern house. I want a modern house. I'm a, I'm Bro, I don't like big homes. Like, I don't know what rich people are so fascinated about with like 20 room houses like i would want a really nice house but i would want it to be like four bedrooms just like high tech right like why would you want 20 rooms like when are you ever using 20 fucking rooms i would want like four bedrooms a living room and a fucking basement and then like that's it like or and, and it would just be high tech. Outside of that, what the fuck is the point? Like, I, I, when, when you surpass five bedrooms, you're just, there's going to be days where you just, weeks, where you don't even walk to a certain side of your house. Uh, Alec for the 10. Fox suicide had a friend and lost him to depression. I'm sorry to hear that. And Scotty for the uh, I'm a big fan of modern house, you know that. Guys, we deserve a nice house. We deserve a house with a pool. I don't know. Let's let's go let's go look around. I also want a nice view. Within only ten days, the royal Yo, I would love to have a house with a pool, but I have no aspiration to take care of a pool. Like that is the biggest like I would love a house with a pool, but then you have to take care of the fucking pool. And that is like too much work. <laughs> like, too much work, right? You gotta open it. You got to do it. You got to test the chemicals every day. You got to vacuum. Oh, fuck that. Like, Ben for the sub. Guilty family had supposedly... <laughs> you could pay someone? Yeah, and that's expensive as shit. Well, I mean, if you have a pool, you probably have enough money to pay somebody. ...bought their dream mansion. However, only eight months after this, the family was being evicted. So basically, guys, this is a 60-day notice to terminate the Tennessee... Which means we gotta leave the royalty palace in two months. Showing that they never owned the house in the first place. The royalty family then moved to a new property where they'd take the chance to stage yet another- Now, when these when these families, though, rent properties that are worth so much, it's just like burning money, right? Like, I understand renting a house and not buying a house that's like fucking 2K a month of rent or like 1,000 a month of rent. But, like, if they're renting this house, they're paying fucking 40 grand a month. Like, straight up. Like, 50 grand a month. Like, they're wasting absurd amounts of money on just something that's utterly useless. Uh, hyena. Hyena for the $100 to fucking suicide prevention. I'm not much of a chatter, but I always love watching the stream. I struggle with suicide a lot and love that you actually do the charity stream for it. You do so much, so much good for many. Today is my birthday. Happy birthday. Sweet 18, so I wanted to make a big dono to celebrate and help as much as I can. Well, happy birthday, and thank you for the fucking 100 for the fucking suicide prevention stream. Bend up for the 7, Scotty for the 7. Uh, and THL for the 5 gifteds. Thank you for the 5 gifteds, THL. And Rusty for the 3. The chat, uh, GDP in the vast mansion of existence, the greatest one of the souls shines brightest, rendering even the humblest of dwellings a palace of profound wisdom. Another fake What? Video titled, Somebody Broke Into Our New Home Live Camera. We just got news that someone broke into our new house. As you guys know, we just bought a new house, the new royalty palace. After stating that their new house was being broken into, Ali decided he didn't want to call the cops for the strangest reason. I'm honestly not cool with calling cops on, on homeless people or what. I don't know if it's a homeless person or not. And he therefore just- Somebody broke into your house! 
decided to go and confront the trespasser himself. He then shows crystal clear security camera footage of the break-in, where the person clearly climbs over the fence. However, when Ali and his- That's not a break-in. That's not a- that's not a break-in. They climb- they- they trespassed in your backyard. They didn't break anything. They just went in your backyard, which is still weird. You could still call the cops on them, but that's not breaking and entering. That's just trespassing. Friend then show up at the house. They state that the intruder had instead gone through the gate. So ladies and gentlemen, that was the gate that someone came through. Oh, look, it's open. Oh, it's still open. You see? It's still open. When they find the intruder staying in the back house, he gives a long sob story about how he's got nowhere else to go. Staying in the back house? They just leave that shit unlocked? Leading Ali to become the hero by giving him a bunch of money. So this guy's telling me that he lost his job and he's got nowhere to stay. I don't want him to stay on the streets. Can't be selfish. Uh, I'm gonna give you some cash, but I'm gonna need you to leave, all right? The video ends with Ali framing himself as a super compassionate person. I truly feel bad. Like, every people are going through a rough time right now. Although, hilariously, only four months later, their house was actually broken into by an intruder, during which they gave a completely different reaction. While during the fake in invasion the fake invasion they're all humble about it the real one they're like oh my god that was the most terrifying thing in my life we're definitely suing i'm definitely pressing charges i'm too poor for the five gifted ali was so kind he didn't even call the cops the real invasion instead began like this hey can i help you bro but what made you think it was cool to come here call the cops call the cops yeah 911 are you serious bro going to people's homes and sleeping in the back hey serious call the cops <laughs> Didn't you pay the other guy for sleeping in your house? The intruder was escorted off the property. Somebody get the shotgun, kill him. Somebody, they just broke into our house. Get the gun. Property. The family didn't offer him any money to go get a hotel. And yeah, why don't you give him three? Instead, bucks? brought three police officers to investigate the now empty scene, which is pretty funny when compared to the first fake video. However, it would then become apparent that on top of faking their videos, they were also lying about their own history, as the family's extremely shady past began to get exposed brutally. Shady past. On the first of March 2021, the royalty family uploaded a video titled "I am not Farhan's father." truth revealed. I mean, they look alike though. In which they explained that the son was actually from the mother's previous marriage and Ali was therefore his stepdad. I met Farah when he was three years old. I'm not his biological dad, but I consider myself as his dad. I love him to death. He's amazing. He's like my son. I treat him like my son. After mentioning that Ali wasn't Farah's actual dad, the biological father came out of nowhere. <gasps> Message to my son, but he's got the gif heart emoji. Michael father came out of nowhere, creating a GoFundMe titled Help Me See My Son King Ferran from Royalty Family, which explained the mother Andrea from YouTube channel The Royalty Family has not allowed the biological father Pierre Lepin to see or talk to his son Ferran Lepin for more than four years wow. and both the child and father have the same right. In addition to the child is exploited and manipulated in social networks without the authorization of the father, which was followed by the biological dad appearing on the dad challenge podcast where he'd spend over an hour completely exposing the family. In the royalty family video mentioned prior, the mother explained that she'd come to America to work as a TV host. I came here for work as you know, I'm a TV host. <laughs> Although what she failed to mention was that she'd fled from her life in Colombia as an adult film star where she'd gotten into trouble with some pretty scary people. She went to get out from Colombia because she had a lot of uh, drug dealers that had uh, bothering, bothering. On top of this, Ferran had told a nice story about how Ali and his mother had met. I remember we met in a little restaurant and then we ate and then from that day we just had a lot of fun. Although in all actuality, the mother began cheating on her former husband after her and Ali met in a gym. Wow. They say that they meet in the restaurant like a perfect moment, you know, the, there's a bunch of liars about how she's they just met. lying. Yeah. Wow. After the biological father confronted Andrea about her cheating, things got even crazier. While I'm driving, she crashed my car she jumped out of her car, went to my window. She broke the window. The police came, take it to jail. Which was then followed by a confrontation in person before the family retaliated by spray painting the biological dad's car. When the father returned to the dad challenge- What? Yo!
Yo, they're fucking millionaires and they fucking vandalize this car. Podcast three months later, he'd claim that Andrea's entire life was a show for the camera. Where she show in the in the video that she is cooking, it's fake. Mm -hmm. It's all fake. fake. What we found out is that she yeah. is not present in their lives at all. She is a greedy, disgusting, selfish woman. Ali and her, they are married, but it is a business Marriage. relationship. They hate each other. They fight all the time. And Ali only stays with her because it's money. They are in it for money and on top of everything Ferran is strictly oh, for but now what the what is the kid's life like forbidden from accessing the internet under any circumstances and this is what we found out as well Ferran is completely and utterly never allowed on the internet i don't even think Ferran knows how famous he is ali blocks him from every incoming anything Dude, he doesn't even know how many people are seeing his videos and shit. He's not allowed to have a phone with the internet on it. Ferran is not allowed to go to other people's houses because Ali cannot stop him from looking at the internet. And those kids get on the internet and see a video like this. Yes. It's over for Ali because Ali yes. has kept this all a secret from Ferran. Bro, that's like borderline child abuse. They're like, they're like, they're keeping their kid so enclosed from reality on this whole time. The podcast ended with Ferran's dad breaking down crying, although Andrea and Ali completely manipulated the situation by filming a TikTok in which they'd obviously forced Ferran to state that the biological dad was lying about everything. To be honest, bro, I'm just tired of this, okay? All this lies that he's putting out there about my mom, my family, it's just like- Oh yeah, what, what, what a, what an honest, what an honest fucking explanation video. To be honest, I'm just so tired of it, bro. Like, it, like that, no emotion. Like he just memorized what he had to say. It was lying about everything. To be honest, bro, I'm just tired of this, okay? All this lies that he's putting out there about my mom and family, it's just like so tired. He sounds more real in the actual videos because he's probably genuinely excited for that shit. It's like super annoying. Like I've seen all the videos, all that disgusting stuff that he's doing. It's just, it hurts, man. Disgusting stuff that he's doing. It hurts to know that that's my dad. It's like, it's sad. Somebody please tell him to stop. Bro, you can tell the video is scripted just by how the kid. <laughs> yeah, exactly, dude. Like, just how he's. It, it sounds like. It sounds like he had to memorize it rather than, like, actually just talking. You know what I mean? Like, you know when you have to memorize a speech in school and then you just kind of relay it with no emotion? Like that. Rather than, like, actually sitting down. And just like saying what's on your mind. Hawks. In just the last week, Ferran's biological. That's the Aiden for the fucking 25 months up. Damn. Kibo for the 25. Uh, link won't work for me. Give this to those who are, uh, lives aren't as peaceful as others. Thanks, Joe. No problem. I'm too poor for the fucking five gifteds. Uh, and the sub, Rusty for the three. Uh, and Neela for the five. Uh, it's a suicide prevention. Love the content. Seeing suicide awareness. Everybody's struggling. Rather, remember there is always something better. No problem. Uh, and also, Maz, remind me to donate that 25 at the end of stream. Dad announced that after four years, he'd gotten a visa and was now in Los Angeles looking for his son. Yet after messaging the mother with the goal of arranging a meeting, she told him to talk to her lawyers, who don't respond to the dad's messages. Meanwhile, the royalty family's views haven't slowed down one bit. Although something deep down feels like over the long run, this channel will end in complete disaster. Every, um, no, every, every family channel ends in a disaster because at some point, the kid's not a kid anymore, right? When he's 18, 19, 20, and he's fucking off to college, like, they could still make family con- Oh, they could still make family content. Oh, he's going to college, right? Some shit like that. But, like, after that, right, after he graduates from college when he's a full-blown adult is when it's like, okay, <laughs> are, you, are we really going to keep making uh, blindfolding our son and picking Lamborghini videos? Like, they could theoretically run it through college, right? Because even when he's 18, 19, 20, like, they could still make, not kid content, but he's still basically under their watch. He's not a full-fledged adult. He's a legal adult, but he would still be in college, you know, under the parents' reliance. Or not reliance. Under the parents', like, guidance, money, all of that shit, right? But at some point, it's just going to be like, you can't really make kid content. Not kid content. You can't make family content anymore. All right, next video. Uh, we'll actually save the pizza on toast video for another day. Uh, we'll do this one and this one. The scammer who sold the Eiffel Tower twice. Um, somebody redeemed Dent. And Slothy for the two. Sorry I can't donate it as much as last time. Dude, you're good. Also, chat, one or two. I got to post on TikTok real quick.
Hotel. All right. Uh, oh my god, no way, Aiden. No way, Aiden. No way, Aiden. What the fuck? Yo, gutsy Aiden for the $300 dono to suicide prevention. What the fuck? What were you doing here? This still is from gutsy Aiden's mousepad team and myself. Much love and thank you for uh for doing this. Dude, thank you for the fucking $300 dono, bro. You and your mouse pad team. I appreciate that shit, dude. That is actually insane. Fucking Aiden for the $300 dono to fucking suicide prevention. What are we at now? I think he just brought it above the goal. $3,098.39 to suicide prevention. What a fucking dub, dude. Thank you for the fucking dono, man. Dub in the chat for Aiden, bro. Genuinely thank you. Wow. All right. Dude, thank you for the dono. That's actually a fucking clutch-ass dono. We just hit that goal. That's crazy. All right, next video. The scammer who sold the Eiffel Tower twice. Alcatraz, the most infamous high- That is so loud. Security prison in the world was where Victor Lustig was heading. Victor had just been captured after running a counterfeit banknote operation that was so big it posed a serious risk to the entire economy. And yet, this fraud wasn't even Victor's most infamous scam. Victor ran countless get rich quick schemes and was possibly the most dangerous and successful con man the world has ever seen. But most of all, he will be remembered as the man who sold the Eiffel Tower twice. This is the crazy true story of how a broke petty thief became the most wanted man in the world. How do you sell the Eiffel Tower? With no documentation of selling the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> and you do it twice. Hey man, I got the Eiffel Tower up for sale. You looking to buy it? Oh, you own the Eiffel Tower? Yeah. $100,000. Fiddle for the sub. On eBay? Dude, this is this looks like it's in the 1800s. The con man who sold the Eiffel Tower twice. The man we know today as Victor Lustig was most likely born in 1890 in the Austro-Hungarian town of Hostene. This is going to be a long ass video. Oh yeah, for sure. Which is today part of the Czech Republic. But truth be told, we don't know for sure as his real identity remains a bit of a mystery even now. That's because throughout his life, he used at least 45 different aliases to cover his tracks and would frequently lie about who he was and where he was from. He changed his name, appearance, and identity from one place to the next, a kind of shape-shifting con man, traveling the world, Yo, finding- that's kinda sick though. That's actually, like imagine your whole life, you just always live a different, like, no matter where you're going, you're just a different person new ways to scam his victims. However, the information we do have about his childhood suggests that Victor's younger years were miserable, spent inside a dark and grim stone house in one of the most impoverished areas of the city. He described his parents as the poorest peasant people who could barely afford to feed and clothe their children. They split up when Victor was eight and sent him to live with some relatives, a situation which he found completely insufferable. By the time he turned 12 years old, Victor concluded that he would be happier on his own, so he dropped out of school and ran away. He began living on the cold streets of various European cities, and as a result, he had to resort to pickpocketing and begging in order to eat. But it was one singular event in 1903 that made him decide to pursue a life of crime. At the time, Victor was a 13-year-old outcast struggling to survive on the streets of Budapest. And one spring evening, he was desperately digging through the trash bins outside a fancy hotel, searching for scraps of food, when he noticed a couple getting ready to eat on one of the hotel's balconies. Victor watched on as the waiters brought plate after plate of food to them, arranging a feast fit for a king, more food than Victor had ever seen in his life. And yet, Victor watched on horrified as the couple didn't even eat a single morsel of the food. Oh, oh my god, yo, that's actually annoying as shit. You ever go to a restaurant, people order food and not fucking eat it? 
where they'll eat like a third of it and then just return that bitch. Yeah, I'm done with it, right? Even if they like it. Like, if you don't like the food and you're done with it, that's one thing. But, like, sitting there ordering fucking $45 a shit, eating one-third of it, and then just, like, giving it back to the restaurant to fucking throw out, like, that actually annoys me. Because, like, why wouldn't you just eat the fucking food? Hold up. Dude, I need to buy a new screen. I, I literally need to buy a new screen protector so bad, dude. It's so cracked that it's like I can't even fucking push buttons. Hold up. Switch for the five. Love you. Uh, thank you for doing the charity stream. It means a lot uh, to, or it means the most to a lot of us. Gorilla for the three. Uh, love the shit you're doing. I lost my dad to suicide a couple years ago. Glad you're doing this. Switch for the three. Uh, thanks for doing this charity. It means a lot to those who have struggled with this. Uh, and Gorilla, I'm sorry that your father passed. Uh, all right, hold up. Also, chat, when is the last NFL game kickoff tonight? At 8.20? Yeah, the Cowboys. Yeah, it's the Cowboys and the Giants. The Eagles are winning against the Patriots right now. All right. Lock in here, chat. Food. And instead, headed straight to the bedroom. Victor couldn't believe it. All that delicious food just sitting there, and they weren't even going to eat anything. Right then and there, Victor decided that if that's how some people could afford to live, whilst he was forced to eat scraps out of the garbage, he would never feel guilty about conning those more fortunate than him. After that, Victor advanced from merely pickpocketing to survive, to more advanced petty theft, and then later to burglary. By the time he turned 18, Victor had also perfected every card trick in the book. He became a master of sleight of hand, which enabled him to cheat at games like poker, or just hustle people on the street. The police, however, soon caught up with Victor's scams and robberies. People that are able to fucking shuffle cards in poker and deal themselves perfect hands, that shit is insane. And Victor ended up serving multiple stints in prison. Like knowing based on the feel of the cards where you have to deal things. In Budapest, Prague, Zurich, and Vienna. But a few months behind bars every now and then did little to damp. Uh, yep, we're timing Capybara play out for fucking 24 hours. What was their other username? Who the hell is Capybara Play 12? They're going to sit that one out. Little VIP timeout for my boy. Who is that? Like, what was their username? Like, bro, he's spamming Go Chargers. And he spelled Chargers wrong fucking five times. He put Chagers. Go Chagers. What was their other username? Every one of their chats is just dub. Who is this? Who is this? Not knowing who's the VIP, they changed their username. I gotta, I, okay, I'll untime them out. Yo, who are you? Not knowing the VIP. I don't know their name. Dude, because I know the VIP's name when I VIP them. When they start, when they're, when they're a VIP and then they change their fucking username, I don't remember who they are. King Godzilla. All right, well, stop fucking spamming or I'm going to un-VIP you. In his spirits. He simply spent the time in jail improving his card skills or reading books. Because despite the fact that Victor left school at an early age, he was a keen learner, as he knew being well educated would help him with his scams and help him appear more sophisticated. My bad eagles suck, by the way. You like the fucking chargers. And he's telling me the eagles are shit. Who went to the Super Bowl last year? The chargers are straight ass and professional that's attracting less suspicion however like many europeans of his eagles are one of the best teams in the nfl right now what kind of crack shit are you on time victor who lost the super bowl i'm not saying they're better than the chiefs i mean who the chiefs just lost to the fucking um the lions and i put money on them so the 49ers what do you mean the 49ers the eagles went to the super bowl last year the eagles and the chiefs Wait. 
Was it the Eagles or the Chiefs last year? Yeah. I had heard stories about. Was it the 49ers? It was the 49ers last year? No, it wasn't. It was the Chiefs. Because I remember I put money I put money on a parlay with Kadarius Tony and he, and he fucked up. He fucked up then and then he fucked up last week too. America, the land of promise and all the opportunities waiting for a smart and resourceful guy like him. So he boarded a ship and headed to the States looking to get rich. But bro said Joe bro. What's up, bros? On the ship right there, two things happened. Firstly, he managed to get a two and a half inch cut along his left cheek from an angry sailor who thought Victor was getting too friendly with his date. Wow. This attack left a permanent scar on Victor's face, which he would later tell people he got from a jewel of honor when it was really just from flirting with someone else's girlfriend. But the second thing that happened on that ship to America was that Victor realized that transatlantic steamers like this- I've been here the whole time? Yeah, I know. I'm saying what's up in the sense of like you're saying Joe bro. Joe bro what? Like what's up? were the perfect hunting grounds for hustlers like him. The first class decks were filled with very rich marks that he could easily talk to and find a way to rip off. For Victor- But how do you fucking convince somebody that you own the Eiffel Tower? Like shooting fish in a barrel. So he'd spend a week aboard a ship crossing the Atlantic, fleece as many of the wealthy passengers as possible, then dock and rinse and repeat on a different ship with new passengers. And thus, the next few years were easy living for him, going back and forth on these ships between Europe and America. One of the most common cons he pulled on the ships was to pose as a successful music producer looking for investment in a Broadway production, which people only realized wasn't real after they'd already invested. However, the good times for Victor were brought to a halt by the First World War, as there were no more pleasure cruises between America and Europe. Now, as for what Victor actually did during the wartime years is a bit of a mystery, although he definitely wouldn't have taken part in any fighting. What is clear is that when the war ended, Victor showed up in New York City, and the man who stepped onto the pier was a far cry from the homeless boy who once had to scrounge through trash cans for food. Dressed in a fine custom tailored suit with a silk shirt and camel hair top coat, he now styled himself as Count Victor Lustig and claimed to be a rich aristocrat in political exile. He had everything he needed. The way he looked, the way he talked, the way he carried himself, they all suggested old money and sophistication. So it was no surprise that almost everyone- Bro, that is nuts though, for him to be able to just convince people of shit by just talking to them. That was taken and then in just get them to give him like tens or hundreds of thousands of dollars just by uh, by making up an entire story about who he is in his life. And by Victor's wily charms. It was a different time, yeah. I mean, people were easier to, to it, it was easier to scam people back then, but still, I would say like even now, like if he was, I, I mean, assuming, I'm assuming he's dead, but, uh, or he's def definitively dead. He was born in the fucking 1800s. Anyways, um, he legitimately, you could do that today, it would just be harder. Victor had reinvented himself once again and created a persona that would be perfect to pull off some much bigger scams. The magic money box? In 1919, Victor met and married a woman named Roberta, who was so infatuated with her new husband that she stayed with him even after finding out he wasn't really a count and how he'd made his money by ripping people off. Unfortunately, Victor's personal life would end up being his downfall, but we'll get to that. The Roaring Twenties were a period of excess for Americans, and thus a perfect opportunity for Victor, who preyed on their- You know what I think about all the time? You know how we look back at the 1920s and shit and we're like, damn, bro, that was like a while ago. Like, what was life like back then? People are going to do the same thing to where we are right now in all, like 100 years when we're all fucking dead. Like in 100 years, people are going to be like, damn, bro, what was the 20s like? And they're not going to be talking about the 1920s. They're going to be talking about 2023. They're gonna be, oh, damn, dude, the 2020s, man. Yeah, that was when COVID started. Greed. Besides classic grifts, he also had a short stint as a counterfeiter, manufacturing fake whiskey stickers and government stamps for bootleggers. However, Victor soon had a better idea, a money machine that could print duplicate dollar bills. Now, obviously it wasn't real, but- I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say to my grandkids, yeah, it wasn't really all that. The 1920s, or the 2020s wasn't really all that, you know? Uh, just playing some, some fucking Valorant, you know, a little bit. Uh, rage queuing and fucking, uh, you know, just a bunch of video games and shit. Uh, you know, the H HBO Max, I was pretty chill. <laughs> I was pretty cool in the in the 2020s, you know. That was that was pretty peak. Uh, outside of that, I don't, 
You know, Call of Duty wasn't really that good then. Victor just had to find some people. Oh my bad, it's Max now, not HBO Max. Gullible enough to believe it was, and sell Stupid them- Stupid-ass fucking company. ...this fake machine for large sums of money. So, Victor had many of these boxes made by a skilled carpenter in New York, and they certainly looked impressive. About two feet in length, with brass trim and a bunch of dials. Victor told people all you had to do was put a real $100 bill inside, plus a blank piece of currency paper, turn a crank, and then wait at least six hours, and the machine would print an exact replica of your $100 bill onto the currency paper thus leaving you with two identical $100 bills. Victor called it the magic money machine. Now, you're probably thinking, how can anyone be dumb enough to fall for that and actually buy this- Yeah, like, put, they would buy the machine? Fake money machine from him. Well, here's how the con works. Firstly, Victor would go to the bank and get a bunch of brand new $100 bills, which meant the serial numbers would be in sequential order. This meant he just had to scrape off the last digit of the serial number and reapply the same last digit on several notes, thus creating a stack of seemingly identical $100. Oh, and he would show you. He would do a little presentation. He would say, oh, look at the serial number. Oh, real dollar bill here, magic money machine. He would crank that bitch and then some dickhead would fucking buy it. The bills. Remember, Victor already had counterfeiting experience, and he only had to change the last digit of the serial number, so with some practice, he was able to perfect this. Secondly, Victor would never approach his targets about buying the box. Instead, he'd first find a way to gain their trust. For example, one of his victims was a wealthy gambler, and so Victor picked his pocket and stole his wallet. Then he went back to that same person he just pickpocketed and said, hey, you dropped this, and gave him the wallet back. This immediately made Victor seem like an honest, kind citizen just trying to help, so it lowered their guard. Oh my god, bro. That's straight out of the fucking movies. This literally is a movie guy. No way he would fucking do that. He would steal their wallet, give it back to them. They would trust him. Then he would end up selling them a fucking money box that just printed paper. And Victor used this as an in to strike up a conversation and subtly engineer the conversation towards the magic money box. Victor would mention it could duplicate banknotes, but then he acted like he didn't want to talk about it, which of course only made people want to know more. Soon, the victim would be begging to see a demonstration of this money machine. And although Victor would pretend to be reluctant at first, he'd eventually agree. And they'd go to his hotel room, where Victor would insert a $100 bill into the machine. But because Victor had come up with the lie about it taking six hours, that gave them time to chat, play cards, or eat dinner, whilst the machine supposedly did its work. Six hours? How much do you think he's selling the box for? This is a sick, this is a 10 hour con. All day. He's scamming one person. When they returned, the machine would have both the original $100 bill inside and a second $100 bill that looked identical as if it had really been perfectly cloned by the machine. Of course, in reality, Victor had simply hidden the second note inside the machine beforehand and they only looked identical because he'd used his counterfeiting skills to change the serial numbers to match. Wow. Now, the target would normally still have some doubts, so they'd go to the nearest bank where the bank teller would confirm that it was indeed a genuine note because it was a real $100 bill. Nothing had been printed on printing paper this was just a banknote Victor had withdrawn earlier. But once the bank teller confirmed it was real, this was normally enough for the victim to believe the machine actually had printed you the- You could realist- If you convince somebody that you could sell a magic money duplication machine, you could realistically ask for any amount of money that you would ever want. But then also, what dumbass is gonna believe that- Yo, what dumbass is gonna believe that this works, right? Because, like, why would he sell him the box if he could just duplicate money himself and not need to sell it to anyone? Because he could just have infinite money if he just kept the box. The bill, like Victor had claimed. But here's the clever part. Why Where's would the you sell it? Been chatting, Victor had dropped hints that he had an emergency situation where he needed a lot of money quickly and that he was frustrated. Oh my god, dude, this guy has a fucking plan for everything. Because his machine took six hours to clone each $100 bill and it was taking too long. So then his victim would come up with an idea. Well, what if I buy the money machine off you? Remember, Victor specifically targeted wealthy people he knew had a lot of cash, like businessmen or gamblers he'd seen win big. But of course, the victim thought they were getting an amazing deal, getting this money machine for a one-time fee that they could use over and over again. Using these tactics, Victor sold multiple copies of his money box throughout the country for tens of thousands of dollars each. And tens of thousands of dollars each in the 19 fucking 20s. How much is that worth now? 20 grand in 1920 today. $305,000.
Even 10 grand would be 150 G's. Oh my God, dude. That because of the lie he'd invented about the money machine taking so many hours to print each $100 bill, it meant he had plenty of time to flee the area before his victim realized he'd been scammed. By the time Bro, they- but then like, that is kind of a pain in the ass. If it honestly took six hours and you bought that shit for 10 grand, how long would that take to get your money back? 6, 12, 18, 24, you only could make, you only could make $400 in a day. Figured out they'd bought a worthless wooden box, Victor was long gone. But here's the real genius of the scam. Despite repeating this con over and over again, Victor was safe from the law because none of his victims ever went to the police or reported him. I mean, how could they? You can't exactly go to the police and complain that your counterfeit money printing machine didn't work as advertised. So most of them just had to accept they'd been ripped off. However, there was one wealthy woman Victor sold a money box to, who after realizing she'd been scammed, spent weeks hunting Victor down. Her name was Billy May Shebel, and eventually she did manage to track him down to a hotel room in another city. But here's the plot twist. When she finally found him, there was no threats or violence. Instead, she was filled with admiration at his resourcefulness and said they should become partners in crime and work together. In fact, the two not only started doing some scams together, but also became lovers. And Victor left his wife to be with her. He wow. would later regret that decision. But for now, things were going oh, great for Oh, because she's going to rat on him. Victor, and he was already planning the biggest con of his career. He's probably going to fake documentation. If he's capable of faking, like, $100 bills and, like, forging and shit, he's probably just going to make a fake document that he owns the Eiffel Tower. But doesn't France own the Eiffel Tower? Like, I, I feel like that's, you're an idiot if you believe that, right? Even in the 1920s. I feel like even then, people would know that... <laughs> The government owns the Eiffel Tower. Laugh for the one, Thyron for the sub, Gutsy Aiden for the three. Kind of crazy where uh, people can make money uh, while they sleep. My grandpa and I were talking about it. He gets shocked every time uh, we talk about it nowadays. What do you mean? Crazy time? It's kind of a crazy time where people can make money while they sleep. What? King for the two. My bad, Joe the Chargers instincts are kicking in. Joe's for the six. I get home at 6.30, uh, so I got to watch you in class, and I got caught, so I lied and said I was studying, and I did a 25-minute improv, 25 minute improv acting as you in different situations and got an A. Bart for the three. Really? Uh, switch for the three. Uh, I think I read everything else. Before we get to the next chapter, quick question. How much time and money are you currently spending on food? I bet if you work this out, including shopping... Spotted that one from a mile away. One day in May 1925, Victor read a newspaper article about the decaying condition of the Eiffel Tower and how it would be cheaper for the French government to tear it down than it would be to fix it. You see, originally, the Eiffel Tower was intended to be temporary, as it was constructed for the 1889 World's Fair in Paris and was supposed really? to be demolished 20 years later. But by 1909, Parisians had grown accustomed to their new landmark, so it stayed on. However, by 1925, the Eiffel Tower was in disrepair and talks about demolishing it had been renewed. Hearing this news gave Victor an idea that would place him in the Hall of Fame of Fraudsters. He was going to sell the Eiffel Tower. No. He arrived in Paris later that same month, accompanied by a frequent sidekick of his named Dapper Dan Collins. Like all We're going to sell it to some jerk off in Paris? Oh my god. Imagine, yo, imagine living like two blocks from the Eiffel Tower and somebody convinces you that they fucking own it and they sell it to you. Of Victor's cons, this one had been meticulously planned in advance, with every step carefully laid out. They had For to sell it to somebody not from France. First, Victor used his extensive contacts in the criminal underworld to obtain some forged stationery and credentials from the French Ministry of Posts and Telegraphs, which was responsible for the Eiffel Tower. Then, he headed to a luxury hotel in Paris, where he booked his room under the guise of a government official. From there, he delivered letters to six of the biggest scrap dealers in Paris, inviting them to the hotel to discuss a private matter he said was way too sensitive to talk about wow. in public. Once the men had assembled in Victor's hotel room, he delivered a carefully rehearsed speech in fluent French about how the government intended to demolish the Eiffel Tower, but didn't want to publicize the decision yet out of fears over a public outcry. They, however, had been trusted with the information so they could bid for the salvage rights. The scrap... Oh! Yo, 
I actually see how people could fall for this. I actually see how people could fall for this. Now, that, that I thought he was just going to try and get somebody to buy it and own it. Like, him selling it to people that are scrappers makes sense, right? Because they want the metal. Dealers were like putty in Victor's hands. That's hand. so smart, dude. I would never be able to do that. I would never... I If I didn't just hear that, I would have never... I would have never come up with the fact that, oh, he's going to sell it to people that want the medal. And he knew exactly how to play them. Firstly, he made them feel important by letting them in on the big secret. Then, he gained their professional interest with specifics on the tower. Victor knew all the details, all the correct measurements, and even how many rivets there were inside the Eiffel Tower. He had done his homework extensively. But finally, Victor ended with the number that all the men inside that room cared about. 7,000. That's how many tons of salvageable high-grade iron they would get from the tower. Victor's audience was mesmerized and already saw it as the deal of a lifetime. Unsurprisingly, they how all- How much is 7,000 tons of iron worth? Presented him with sealed bids for the project. But truth be told, Victor had already found his target, Andre Poisson. As it was clear, Andre was quite desperate for that one major deal that would take his company to the next level. So Victor asked him to stay behind to discuss something in private. When it was just the two of them, Victor started talking about the hardships and limitations of a government job. To Andre, the intent was obvious. He was looking for a bribe. Weirdly enough, this actually put the scrap dealer at ease. Bribes were a routine part of doing business for him, and it also explained why Victor had arranged the meeting in a private hotel room. So ironically, the fact Victor had asked for a bribe is what made Andre believe the whole deal was definitely real. And thus, Andre had no problem writing a very gen- What? Him asking for money made it seem real. Strokes for the sub anonymous for the 15 uh, uh, suicide prevention. Baba for the sub anonymous for the 15 to suicide prevention again. Generous check for the man he assumed to be just another corrupt mid-level government official. But once the scrap dealer had left, Victor immediately cashed the check and caught the first train to Austria, pleased with a job executed perfectly. He spent the next few weeks in a luxury How much do you think he made though? hotel in Vienna, waiting to read about his scam in the papers. But he never did. He soon realized that Andre kept the whole matter quiet out of shame and embarrassment for falling for the scam. After all, if you'd given someone a huge bribe to win the contract of buying the Eiffel Tower for scrap metal, would you really want to publicly admit you'd fallen for the scam? But the fact Andre hadn't publicized the scam or gone to the police gave Victor another bolt of inspiration. This man- Oh, let me do it again. Oh, let me go back and do it again. He could do the exact same scam again. And that's precisely what happened. A few months later, Victor returned to Paris and repeated the whole con with different scrap metal dealers. Once again, he walked away with a nice fat check, but this time his mark did go to the police. So once the story was out, Victor thought it best not to tempt fate and instead returned to the United States. But the fact he was able to do this more than once just shows why scammers often get away with their schemes for so long. People don't want to admit they've been scammed. However, for Victor Lustig, eventually he would push things too far, and his downfall would soon begin. He tried to sell it a third time! He went back and he said, I'm selling this bitch again. Hey guys, before we get to the next part of the story, I just want to say that if you find these videos in Oh my gosh. Interesting. Please consider turning on notifications. Oh, I thought it was going to be a fucking ad again. Okay, this is a good video. I like the video, but damn, I thought he was going to- I thought it was a double header. I thought it was a double header on two ads in one video. Occasions for Magnates Media. I'm working on some even bigger projects right now, so if you want to make sure you see them when they're ready, just hit the notification. Say, God damn, I didn't even know you were allowed to do that. Well, no. I also, sky. I just want to say a massive thank you for watching this channel. So yeah. Although he was now a rich man, once Victor was back in America, he had no intention of slowing down. No target was too big or too small for him. There's a story that he even dared to swindle the notorious mobster Al Capone. Victor told Capone he needed $50,000 to finance a scam, and that he could double Capone's money in just two months. However, Victor I then- I would never try to scam Al Capone turned the money to Capone in full, saying the scam had gone wrong. Capone was impressed with his honesty and handed him $5,000. Of course, this was Victor's plan all along. He'd never intended to do anything except return the money to Capone in the hopes of a reward. However, when the Great Depression gave him $5,000 for fucking nothing and overwhelmed America, Victor found that the well of high-paying marks started to dry up. So he returned to counterfeiting again. Except, this time he was thinking much bigger. In 1930, he started a new racket with a man named William Watts, a pharmacist who also happened to be a high-class engraver. Their fake bill 
pearls were of the highest quality, the super notes of the era as they were described by one authenticating expert. And to keep in line with Victor's grand ambitions and confidence, they made $100 bills. Other counterfeiters stuck to low denominations since those were easier to pass around unnoticed, whereas $100 bills received the most scrutiny. Victor knew this, but he didn't care. He was confident that his product was good enough to match the real thing. Ultimately, this brash overconfidence would prove to be his downfall. It all started in- Isn't it almost impossible to counterfeit US money now? With like the $100 bills and the fucking strips on the currency? Like, they- 50 years ago, it would have been easier. But like, now they have like all these new mechanisms to where it's like replicating that shit's like borderline impossible. 1931, when Victor showed his audacity once more by calling a Texas sheriff with the money box down. Once the sheriff realized he'd been duped, he tracked Victor down to Chicago and confronted him at gunpoint. But Victor was always a smooth talker, even under pressure, and simply explained that the machine was probably defective. He apologized to the sheriff and offered him $50,000 compensation, double what he'd paid for the box. The sheriff walked away a happy man, but soon discovered that he had been conned again as he'd been given counterfeit money. Ah! This was Victor's first big mistake because it put him on the radar of the Secret Service. Back then, the Secret Service main job wasn't to protect the President of the United States, but to stop counterfeiters. When they heard about such a large payout being made using high quality, fake well, the Secret Service started out at stopping counterfeiters. Through dollar bills, they knew they were dealing with a big operation, but they weren't prepared for just how big it actually was. Over the course of the last few years, Victor and Watts had made over $1 million in hard to trace counterfeit money, which had already been distributed to the public. There was genuine concern that the operation could destroy confidence in the dollar and shake the foundations of the American economy. So in 1934, a special squad was assembled to catch Victor, which consisted of Secret Service and Treasury wow. Department agents, New York police officers, and state troopers. However, it was ultimately an anonymous tip that led to Victor's capture in May 1935. And who was that anonymous tip from? The ex wife! As someone gave the authorities the address of Victor's counterfeiting headquarters. Then, on May 10th, the police intercepted a call that Victor himself would be arriving there at a certain time, and so the authorities made sure they were there to arrest him when he showed up. Victor was hauled off to jail. But who did the police get this information from? Well, it's widely believed that the anonymous tip came from Billy May, the woman who Victor had had an affair with. But apparently, after Victor dumped her for a new partner, she'd given the tip to the police out of anger and jealousy. Either way, Victor was looking at decades in prison for this. No amount of smooth talking could get him out of a charge for producing millions of dollars of counterfeit money. But millions? In September of that year, Victor added one final feat to his already remarkable criminal resume when he escaped from the supposedly escape-proof federal detention center in Manhattan. He'd fashioned a 50-foot rope from bed sheets and cut through his bars using a pair of pliers someone had smuggled in for him. As he shimmied down the side of the building using the bed sheet rope, he pretended to be a window washer, casually wiping at windows as he shimmied down so it didn't look like he was escaping. Confident as always, Victor even left behind a note on his pillow to taunt the guards about his escape. Unfortunately for Victor, by this point he had such a notorious reputation that a lot of resources were spent on finding him again, and thus he was caught less than a month after escaping from the detention center. This time, there would be no chance of escape, as Victor was sentenced to 20 years in prison on the dreaded Alcatraz Island, the ultimate maximum security prison. Although technically it wasn't Victor Lustig who was sentenced, as by this point he was using the alias of Robert Miller. Although some believe Robert may have been his actual real name that the authorities had managed to uncover. But what we know for sure is that Victor, or Robert, or whoever this con man really was spent the rest imagine no one knowing your real name rest of his life behind bars like he no one frequently complained to the Alcatraz guards about an illness he had but they thought he was faking it for the first time in his life he wasn't he died of pneumonia on March 11th 1947 at the wow. age of 57 his death damn yo I should have started social media with a different name what should I have what should I have started my name uh or what should I have started my social media account uh with my name as Some other shit. Joey Ball Snatcher? What the fuck? Bartholomew? Oh my god. All right, hold up. We're going to save this other video for another day because I actually got to do a bunch of fucking homework chat. F in the chat that it's fucking Sunday, but uh, I got to go do some philosophy work. Fucking but homework chat. I hope you had fun watching the video uh, or watching the stream. I had a fun time streaming. Uh, I will see y'all uh, tomorrow at 4.30 EST, uh, where we will be doing Subnautica. Uh, Tuesday, I'll be li or Tuesday, I won't be live. Wednesday, I will be live at 4.30 again, doing Joyville and then Scary Reacts. Thursday, I'll be live at 4.30 doing Fortnite, maybe Fall Guys, then some Miles Morales, possibly. 
Uh, Friday will be Reacts at 4.30. Next Saturday, I'll probably be live at 2 uh, doing uh, either VR or Prison Simulator. I'll let my chat choose later in the week. Uh, and then next Sunday, Reacts. Uh, we had a great charity stream today. Uh, happy World Suicide Prevention Day once again. I appreciate everybody that fucking donated. Uh, we raised three thousand one hundred and thirty-six dollars. I'm gonna donate the twenty-five, um, right when I end stream. Uh, that somebody gave me. Who gave me that twenty-five again? That they couldn't donate. Kibo. Kibo gave me a twenty-five because the link wouldn't work for them. So I'll donate their twenty-five after after the end of this. Uh, but three thousand one hundred thirty-six dollars and thirty-nine cents. What a fucking dub chat. We're gonna get the extra YouTube video tomorrow. Uh, we're actually going to be posting on YouTube probably right when I end stream today. Uh, and yeah, I appreciate everyone that popped out into the stream. Exclamation point Discord mods. Could you pin the Discord link now? Uh, send videos to me to react to games for me to play in the video suggestion tab, game suggestion tab. That's how I find a lot of the videos that I react to in the games that I play. Uh, if you have any videos you want me to react to for React, I send them there uh, in the video suggestion tab, whether it be funny videos, uh, documentation or documentary esque videos like the one that we just watched. Uh, scary videos, whatever the fuck, philosophy shit, could be anything, right? Whatever you think I, I or my chat would like or not like and just make fun of. Uh, and the same thing with the game suggestion tab. If you have any games you want me to play in the game suggestion tab, send them there. Whether it be for random game days that are short, ga uh, short games that are kind of stupid or uh, actually good long games or multiplayer games, whatever you think my chat would like and I would like. Uh, outside of that, I had a fun time streaming. I hope you guys had a fun time watching. We had a great chat, great audience today. A lot of people that popped out into the stream and I appreciate the support for today. Uh, once again, if you're ever going through something mentally, please seek help. Reach out to somebody. Uh, it is a much better thing to do than to just fight that shit alone uh, or end your own life. Suicide is never the answer. Um, it is a permanent solution for a temporary problem. Uh, and yeah, I appreciate everybody that donated once again. Scratchy for the sub. Uh, and our next charity stream is actually going to be next Friday for American Heart Association. So that will actually be uh, in less than a week. Uh, and once again, I appreciate everybody that popped out. Uh, and I'll catch you all later. Uh, who do you want to raid today? We can raid JoJo. I'm down to raid JoJo. All right. I hope you had fun watching once again. I had a fun time streaming, and I'll catch y'all later. We're going to raid in five. Well, actually, no. I got to wait. All right. I'll see y'all tomorrow for Subnautica. Uh, it's going to be a W stream then. We started Subnautica last Monday. We're continuing it today. Uh, make sure to pop out to that shit. It's a fun-ass stream. Kind of a more vibey stream. I just kind of talk to my chat. They give me advice on the fucking game. We just play that shit. It's fun as hell. Uh, kind of like Minecraft. And when we're done Subnautica, we'll probably start up the modded Minecraft world. Because uh, we'll probably beat Subnautica around the time that I would normally start anyway. But yeah. Hope you all had fun watching once again. And I'll catch you all later. We're going to raid in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1.